order of the Public Improvement Commission hearing of April 23rd, 2020. I appreciate everybody's uh, flexibility in uh, helping to host this hearing in a uh, in a new way for us. And just want to remind people that if you are not on the agenda to present at that particular point in time, uh, to please simply uh, mute your phones. Uh, our first item of the day are the hearing minutes at the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff. The acceptance of the minutes held on March 25th, 2020. Any questions or comments on the minutes? Hearing none, I will uh, entertain a motion on this item. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to our first item, uh, our utility pole hearing continued. This is on a petition by Eversource Energy for a pole installation within East Eagle Street, a public way in East Boston, to install one new utility pole to be located on its northerly side, west of Condor Street. Uh, this had its first utility pole hearing on uh, February 13th, 2020, and its first utility pole hearing continued on March 12th, 2020. Is Everstore here to present? Hi. Perfect. If Everstore would like to walk us through the uh, the poll hearing. Is Shannon on the line? Give Shannon a moment, and if not, and Todd, correct me if I'm wrong, we can loop back to this item when she is. Uh, yes, thank Just you. Just you again. Perfect. Thanks, Parham. All right, we will uh, we'll pick this up uh, after the end of the public hearing uh, continued items and before the start of the public hearing, if that works for you, David. Yes. Great. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so moving on to our public hearing continued. Our first item is on a petition by TC Systems Inc. for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Dorchester. Locations are Blue Hill Avenue, generally between Havelock Street and Wilcox Street, and Havelock Street southwest of Blue Hill Avenue. This was new business on January 30th, 2020. Had its first public hearing on February 13th, 2020 had its first public hearing continued on uh, February 27, 2020, second public hearing continued on March 12, 2020, its third public hearing continued on March 26, 2020. This is shown a, on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan, Proposed Conduit Placement, Blue Hill Avenue at Havelock Street, City of Boston, one sheet dated January 23rd, 2019. Good morning, uh, thanks for setting up this virtual call. Um, this is Adam Heller from Sienna Engineering Group representing TC Systems for this project. Um, I hope everyone can see the screen that I'm sharing, which is our um, engineering plan. Um, this plan has gone through a couple of changes since the original um, hearing. So we now show um, our uh, four inch PVC conduit going around the median as requested. Um, so the contractor will take special care not to impact um, that curb with the median at all. Um, the reason that this was continued is we were waiting for approval uh, to break into this existing exonet handhold as shown. Uh, and we did receive written approval uh, for this build um, yesterday from exonet and that was sent to Todd Liming. Um, so I believe everything uh, will be in order for uh, this to be the final public hearing today. Uh, thanks for your uh, coordination on this. Other questions and comments from the commissioners? Chief, just the procedural step. Yep. The gentleman who just testified, he needs to turn his screen off so we can have a screenshot that matches his face to the voice. I'm sorry, you said you, you need to screenshot with my face uh, for yeah. my voice? We need to see your face so you can stop uh, sharing the screen or somehow because this whole uh, episode is being paid and right now we just see your voice. I see. Unfortunately, the, my uh, laptop does not have a video camera. I, I do only have um, the ability to share my screen at this at this time. I only have audio. Um, is there is there another way I can uh, no. get in? Okay. Again, for the record, if you could say reiterate your name and your affiliation. Sure. This is Adam Heller from Sienna Engineering Group, uh, representing TC Systems. Thank you so much, Adam. Sure. Thanks, Adam. 
Uh, questions or comments on uh, on the proposal? Todd or Abby? Members of the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion to approve uh, public hearing continue number one for a grant to location for, uh, for a petition by TC Systems uh, to install new telecommunication conduit with City Seattle within the following public ways in Dorchester, Blue Hill Avenue, and Havelock Street, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department. Um, sheet dated January 23rd, 2019, as read into the record by the chair. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. So moved. Moving Thank on you. to our next uh, item in the public hearing continued portion on a petition by Center Court Partners LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb, sidewalk, roadway, pedestrian ramp, and speed help reconstruction. The locations are Dern Street at address number 20 between Temple Street and Ridgeway Lane and Temple Street north of Dern Street. This was new business on March 12th, 2020. And it's public hearing on March 22nd, or 26th, 2020. This is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan 20 Dern Street Public Way Boston Three Sheets Day December 2019. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for morning. being this morning. Being in this project. I hope we got the revised plans I sent out last evening. For the record, my name is Chris Iannuzzi. I'm a civil engineer with EBI Consulting, representing the client Center Court Partners. We are proposing the sidewalk improvements along Temple Street and Dern Street. Right. And uh, Chris, I know that we've had a couple of conversations about uh, about some of the sidewalk uh, work along Temple Street. Can you talk us through what you're proposing there? Yes, yeah, correct. Uh, it's basically a replace in kind of uh, the brick pavers. Uh, we're going to continue that across the uh, entrance to the city park on the opposite side of Temple Street. In addition to that, we're replacing the uh, accessible ramps at the top of Temple Street on Dern and across on the opposite side of the State House. Uh, that's pretty much it. We're going to replace everything in kind. In addition, we're going to add uh, some park, no parking signs. Last we met, there were a couple of options regarding that. We've added those to the plans. We've also uh, added some delineation to identify uh, some paver features, such as the transitions to the park. They're a serpentine-shaped feature, um, just an opposite course of brick, but mostly. Uh, we've also added uh, the gutter mouth requirements for the catch basins on Temple Street as well. The only missing piece, Mr. Chairman, is the coordination with National Grid regarding the gaslight street lamps. And I just want to add that Really, no disposition to those lamps. Uh, this is simply a surface replacement. Uh, we don't intend to excavate beyond the level needed to replace the brick pavers. Uh, we don't anticipate any any disturbance to those features. However, you know we, we will continue to try and reach out to them. It's been difficult during this this period. Um, but again, that is that is the remaining piece that we're hoping to get as soon as possible. Uh, very difficult at this point. So we'll continue to pursue that matter. Um, hopefully we've addressed all the other agency comments within the city. Um, I did reach out to several of them last week um, in response to their comments. Great. So I'm here to address any additional comments you have today and uh, hopefully we can move this along. And Chris, you're not replacing the gas lights. Uh, you're simply just getting you want National Grid Science to let them know, to have them affirm that they know what you're doing, what your plans are, is that right? Correct, correct. Uh, another, a similar, um, one of the other agencies has simply noted, you know, we have lines that three feet down, don't, you know, don't excavate beyond certain amount, and they didn't really have any concern with it. Uh, being this is a gas feature, um, I would be more comfortable receiving a response from National Grid, uh, but we don't anticipate any disturbance to those features or the lines, supply lines through them. Um, the excavation is really minimal and it's, and it's really limited to the surface and portions of the base cost that's required to put in the brick. Uh, uh, 
I, it, maybe as a situation where we'll just want to do a contingent approval, I think, for, to your point as well, just based upon National Grid's final sign off in case they have any substantive comments that adjust the design. Does that work Absolutely. for you? Absolutely. That would work well. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, other members of the commission, comments, questions? Todd or Abhi? Members of the public? All right, now I'll uh, entertain a motion on this item. Uh, again, uh, contingent upon uh, National Grid sort of uh, review of, uh, of the plan. Very well, thank you. I make a motion to approve a petition by Senate Court Partners LLC for specific repairs. Uh, at the location of Duren Street and Temple Street as further read into the record by the chair uh, and as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division specific repairs plan 20 Duren Street Public Way Boston three sheets dated December 2019 uh, subject to uh, review and sign off by National Grid. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Have a great day. You too. Take care. All right. Uh, moving back to our utility pole hearing continued uh, on a petition by Eversource Energy for a pole installation within East Eagle Street, a public way in East Boston, to install one new utility pole to be located on its northerly side, west of Condor Street. It's at its first utility pole hearing on February 13th, 2020, and its utility pole hearing continued on March 12th, 2020. Good morning, Chris. Yeah. Uh, so Chanel Grant is on the line and she can see and hear, but she can't uh, get her microphone to work. So this is David Petersile, and I can answer any questions regarding this particular poll. Uh, there's been emails back and forth between ourselves, Eversource and Todd Lemming and Brian Melia from Public Facilities Department. So if you're familiar with those, I don't know that I need to rehash all that, but um, if you have any questions, we're here to answer them. Uh, I think I'm a little familiar with it. Um, I think the reason we continued the, the first time was because uh, we were waiting on uh, DPU sign off for on, on the broader substation project. Correct if I'm wrong, this is also necessary for the, the police station project? Yes. Okay. Um, Okay, and, and have you received the DPU sign up for the substation project? So know that we did receive the, well, first of all, in, for clarity, the project is an approved project that was approved back in December 2017. There was a notice of project change submitted for relocating the substation from the east side of the DPW yard on East Eagle Street to the west side of the DPW yard, you know, uh, to Condor Street side. Yep. That that we did receive a tentative decision approving the notice project change February 28th, for which on March 11th there was going to be a public hearing held by the EFSB to during which they would normally vote on that. However, it was canceled because of the COVID-19 concerns, and we have no knowledge of when it might be. Um, Rescheduled, so we're kind of between. We're, I guess you call it. We're in purgatory. <laughs> um, the, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. The our, the property and construction management division of the city of Boston, and maybe Todd can weigh in on this. Uh, have uh, have said that this this pole relocation is uh, essential for their construction project. Is that correct? Yes. That so there was a meeting in I think it was April 9th, and it's. Uh, the Eversource design distribution engineering team was on that call with Brian Melia of Public mm -hmm. Facilities and actually unbeknownst to me because there's two separate work orders written for this project uh, they're intertwined and the reason why they have to be two separate work orders because the costs get charged to two different Probably. cost accounts mm -hmm. so the Petition before you right now was originally for a work order associated with strictly for the substation. It turns out that that same pole is necessary to feed the American Legion field to refeed it 
as well as to be able to remove an existing pole on the easterly side of Condor and East Eagle, which the police station needs removed. And then there's actually other poles that need to be installed, which would come under um, before the commission through a Verizon petition. And all that has to happen to be able to provide permanent power to the police station. Got it. Okay. Um, Todd, anything that you would add there about the connection between this and the public and the police station project? Uh, Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Chris? Sorry, Todd, we had you for a moment and then we, we lost you. Chris, can you hear me? Uh, well, Todd is uh, restoring his sound. Uh, any questions or comments from uh, members of the commission? Um, I actually just have one comment. Um, so, the last time you presented, um, we mentioned that we had a catch basin in the area um, to just, you know, watch out for it. And then uh, we do have recent record information that shows um, our water main may be up against the curb line there at, um, at Cond East Eagle and Condor. So um, we can send that information to you. Um, I don't know if I can get uh, your email address from uh, right now or I can get it from, um, from, from Todd later on. Yeah, that's perfect. It's, it, you okay. can, uh, Todd has my inf contact information. That'd okay, be great. Good information to have. Thank you. Thank you, David. Other questions or comments? Chris, can you hear me now? Perfectly. Oh, very good. Uh, sorry about that. Had some technical difficulties here. Um, just for uh, David and Chanel's uh, information, Dylans may hit star six to unmute their phone. So if Chanel from Eversource has anything to add. has expressed an interest in uh, having this poll move forward for the police station. All right. Other, uh, thank you, Todd. Any other questions or, or comments from the commission? Other questions or comments, Todd or Avi? All set. All right, members of the public? None. Okay. Um, because of this, this poll's connection with the police station work uh, that is uh, that is ongoing through the uh, Property and Construction Management Division. Uh, I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion to approve the poll installation on East Eagle Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, moving on to our public hearing portion. Thank you. Uh, no problem, David uh, Chanel. Um, moving on to the public hearing portion, our first item is on a petition by Infrasource Energy for a grant application to install new electrical infrastructure within the following public ways in South Boston. Northern Avenue, generally between Sleeper Street and Pier 4 Boulevard. Pier 4 Boulevard, generally between Northern Avenue and Seaport Boulevard. This was new business on March 26, 2020. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, Northern Avenue, Pier 4 Boulevard, South Boston, eight sheets did April 15, 2020. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. This is Doug Zarnomsky representing Eversource. <clears throat> I'm project manager for the project. I also have Terry Forsanger and Nicole Bowden on the line from Eversource. And I have <clears throat> Amy Prange from WS Development, Anu, Agrawal and Jeff Koderitz from VHB who are constructing uh, the project for us. I'll hand it over to uh, Jeff who will walk you through this. Sure, let me, uh, uh, folks can hear me okay. I will uh, share my screen real quick. That'd be great, Jeff. Okay, is that, uh, is that showing up okay? <laughs> Uh, it was, and there we go, now it is. There we go. Okay, great. Um, yeah, just to tack on to what Doug said, uh, this is a quick locus map. Um, the line in red is the existing transmission line um, up Sleeper Street down Northern Avenue. Uh, essentially follows the old right-of-way of Northern Avenue. Um, but with the uh, construction of Pier 4 Boulevard squaring off with the new Northern Avenue, the intent is to relocate the existing transmission line 
out of the uh, parcel G block uh, where my cursor is here uh, into the Northern Avenue and PR4 roadways to accommodate for future development in the parcel. Um, it includes on the on the north side of the plan uh, a new manhole over an existing splice location uh, just across from the courthouse and in green here is uh, reflecting of the proposed duck bank routing through Northern Ave and Pier 4 Boulevard. Um, since the new business meeting we've had uh, a couple more coordination efforts um, followed up with Boss Water and Sewer on um, some questions on existing Water infrastructure, I think we've nailed that down with, with Phil. Um, we are still in the site plan review process with Boston Water and Sewer, which is ongoing, but um, I believe we've uh, I believe we've resolved the routing um, design with them. Um, we've incorporated a couple other comments from um, notification packages just on notifications. Um, and I believe uh, I believe other than that, all outstanding questions have been addressed, but more than happy to talk through um, any questions, comments, um, anything else we can provide. Thanks for that, um, Jeff. Uh, Denise, have uh, all of your uh, questions or comments been addressed with this project? Um, actually, yeah. Uh, this, so, Chris, for this project, um, you know, as Jeff stated, um, you know, if it's still in the site plan review process and uh, we haven't gotten, um, you know, official approval yet, we'll have to just make it contingent upon our approval. Um, Jeff and uh, team, you know, we appreciate, we know that you, uh, we had some concerns about, um, you know, the, the sweeps, uh, especially around Pier uh, 4 Boulevard and Northern Avenue. Um, but unfortunately, since this is like, that was such a big issue for us and it hasn't been uh, approved yet, uh, you know, we do need the approval. Um, so, but thank you for, uh, you know, um, try to address our comments. We'll just have to wait for the approval. Yep. Thanks, thanks, Denise. Other questions or comments? Chief, I have a few questions. Yep. Jeff, the, let's first focus on the sweep location, okay, where you are taking the tangent and what is the time duration of the construction work? This is assuming that you have purchased your 115 KV lines, you have figured out how to make that bed. Let's assume all those logistics and prep work has been done and that you are ready to go into construction. How long will that actual construction work take if and when it is authorized with a, a public work slash transportation department uh, occupancy permit? I zoom to one of the sheets here that, that gives a bit of blow up of the, of the two sweeps here. I'm assuming this is where you're talking, Para, and um, Anu, I might need to defer to you on uh, on some of the, the timing or, um, or or Chris or Amy. Um, yeah, good morning, this is Amy Prange with WS Development. Um, so the underground infrastructure works anticipated to take four to five months to get all the conduit in and the manholes. Um, and then we have four to six months work, um, outage work when cables being Fold and refold, um, and then at the end of the project, we'll be repaving the public ways. So overall, the project's about a year from when we start. We were going to start mid-May. Um, we're running two schedules right now. Um, one would be a start like like late summer when construction's allowed to restart in the city of Boston, um, and see how much we can get done before the moratorium. We're looking at another version where we just start next spring. We don't have an actual start date yet, given everything that's going on. Amy, the reason I'm asking that question is, as you may be aware, the city is planning on rebuilding the Northern Avenue Bridge. Yes. And I am of the opinion that all parties will recognize that if construction access is needed, we can't be stressing out the west side or the northern side of the bridge, we can't, across the pond, across the river. Okay, meaning on the Atlantic Avenue side, we can't be accessing the bridge. So the only way we can get to the bridge side is off Northern Avenue and or Sleeper Street. So right now I am having a huge concern about the timing of your project. Okay, and the fact that the bridge construction is going to start uh, as early as next year. So we have a situation. Okay. That's one, uh, yeah. and I appreciate you putting on the record that you will be doing curve-to-curve -curve resurfacing. 
that, that has been the tenets of this agreement. You are also putting a new man hole at the, at the sleeper street. I didn't pick up on that. Uh, again, the timing of that work. See, in the um, QEs, uh, these are the two roads which you can get to the bridge. Okay, for all construction vehicles that are needed that cannot be supported. Some of the construction work will be supported through the water, that's how we are bringing in stuff. But, you know, there's a fair amount of construction that needs to be accessed off the city streets. And I am still not getting a full sense of when you sh when you are doing this work, we have I, how much of the street is going to be taken out? How much access will be denied? Is you know can a, can construction vehicles get in? Can um, take some effort? Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I mean, we met with the courthouse. We've been meeting with the courthouse for several months now about this project. Um, you know, it's unfortunate about the shutdown. They really wanted us to get this done and get it out of the way because of the Northern Average project, which I'm sure would help you as well. Um, we have a manhole going in kind of right in the middle of the city on Northern Ave. There'll be one-way traffic heading towards the bridge, um, always. And then there's a freezed pit shed going in the sidewalk on Sleeper Street. Um, on the retail side of the of the block, not the envoy side. Um, so Sleeper Street will be one way that, and we have reached out to Ed Hesford again to try to discuss the traffic control plan. We have not had a response yet. Um, we'll try again. Okay. And I, I do think our start date would be really helpful for us and our planning purposes, because maybe this manhole and some of the infrastructure work on this side of the project is something we try to accelerate this year to get out of your way. Okay, so Amy, uh, the bridge project, we are on a schedule to advertise for construction in November of this year. Okay. November, so come January, February, it will be under construction and I need to certify that access is available. So this is me letting you know that access to the Northern Avenue Bridge project will supersede any other access of Sleeper Street, Northern Avenue, or PFO Boulevard. Okay? So that has to be, uh, those schedules will have to be folded into getting the bridge built. Will be as accommodating as humanly possible. Okay, thank you. Okay. How long has this project been on the books? Your project. I think they are both sharing a couple of decades old projects. <laughs> yeah, I think before 2010, it's been a long time. Yes. Okay. Other uh, questions or comments? Uh, Amy, Brian, Joe? None for me. How about Robbie? We're all set. All right. Members of the public? Uh, none. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a, a motion on this item again, contingent upon final sign off from Boston Water and Sewer. I'll make a motion to approve on a petition by Eversource Energy for a grant to location within the following public ways in South Boston, Northern Ave, and Pier 4 as read to the record by the chair and is contingent upon BWSC approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to our next Thank item on a petition by. Thank you very much. I'm Doug Jeff. Um, on a petition by Seaport N slash P title holder LLC for the acceptance of pedestrian easements adjacent to the following public ways in South Boston. Locations are Congress Street on its southwesterly side, southeast of Boston Wharf Road, Boston Wharf Road on its southeasterly side, generally between Congress Street and Summer Street. This was new business on uh, March 26, 2020, and this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Easement Plan. Congress Street and Boston Wharf Road, 400 Summer Street, Boston, one sheet date, March 19th, 2020. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. 
My name is Claudia Sanchez from Wilson & Stores. I'm here on behalf of the petitioner's Seaport Square Development Company, the master developer of the Seaport Square project, and Seaport NP title holder, the owner of Future Blocks NNP. I'm joined today by Ali Ribeiro and Amy Prange from WS Development, as well as John Schmidt from Niche Engineering. By now, we've been before the commission a number of times for approvals relating to various blocks of the Seaport Square project. The application before you today is for the Block P project located just south of Congress Street between Boston Park Road and East Service Road. Uh, the Block P project will involve the construction of an underground shared parking garage on Block N and P with a 17-story mixed-use tower above a portion of the garage. It will also deliver the Summer Street steps connecting Congress Street to the elevated Summer Street Bridge. Um, Allie can provide additional product details in a minute. The first action for which we are requesting approval is for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement of, of two areas uh, along Boston Wharf Road and Congress Street. Consistent with prior approvals, the developer will retain the rights above and below the sidewalk surface. The second is for specific repairs within Boston Wharf Road, Congress Street, and Summer Street, which John uh, can walk you through. Uh, the third action is for the granting of a private utility license for a telecommunications utility crossing within Congress Street serving blocks N and P. And the last is for the granting of a projection license for three canopies on Congress Street and four on Summer Street. Unless you have any questions, um, I'll now turn it over to Ali or John Schmidt. Thank you so much for the context. Uh, good morning, everyone. John Schmidt here. Can you see the screen? Uh, we can see that you are oh. presenting, but I can't see what you're presenting, John. Uh, damn it. <laughs> Excuse me. me. No, it's technology. And it's all new to me. Um, I'm, my apologies. Uh, do you have the drawing? Can I speak to the drawings if I can't get this to work? Yep. Uh, does, I have the pedestrian easement up for Boston Wharf Road and Congress Street. Do the other members of the commission have uh, have that? Chief, I may be able to share that plan if that's what you want. Great. Why don't, uh, we, why don't we do that for, for you, John? Does that work for you, John? That would be wonderful, Todd. You're saving me. Thank you. I miss the days of, hi, how are you, and, you know, looking you in the eye okay. and that sort of thing. Do I need to do anything on this end, Todd? Uh, you may need to click stop presenting. Bear, bear with me, I'm getting there. Okay. okay. There we go. Thank you. So this is for a pedestrian easement, um, as is described along Boston Wharf Road and Congress Street. Um, the easement along Boston Wharf Road will uh, ensure that there's seven, foot, seven feet of safe pedestrian access, concrete sidewalk pedestrian access. And as we turn down Congress Street, the sidewalk is um, minimally 8.8 .8 feet within the easement area of a concrete sidewalk. Um, it brings the, the easement starts at the right of way line and goes to the building face. Questions or comments on the pedestrian easement by members of the commission? Yeah, these guys had a bunch of conversations with us recently about what we're doing on Boston Wharf Road. Um, we hadn't finalized exactly what our cycle infrastructure was gonna look like. I think that we're much closer to that, which was gonna define the curb line, which was gonna define the width of this pet easement. Um, I think we needed a couple additional feet from where they had originally set this line. Um, and I think that at this point we have settled on uh, where the line needs to be to make sure that the pinch points have our minimum dimensions associated with them. And my client is also um, willing to amend this should there be any changes in the, you know, in the near future as we finalize the exact design of Boston Wharf Road and its uses. Yeah, correct. Thank you, John. Amy, John, we, we, we appreciate that. Uh, Amy Prange, John, we appreciate that. Amy, according to any changes we want to see at this point, or uh, is this does this work for BGD given the conversations you guys have been having? So I think that uh, we came, we analyzed the pinch point essentially, and we found that we need two additional feet to make it work. Um, 
and we've gotten back to WS and they're, you know, okay with that modification. Um, and at, we'll continue and, and, you know, go through the whole, uh, the whole front page to make sure that everything's all right. But the, the worst case scenario, which is kind of at this garage door entrance where we have the thinnest sidewalk um, is, is really what we wanted to make sure we could um, get a, a, a minimum sidewalk fine. Questions or comments by other members of the commission? Todd or Robbie? I think we're all set. Uh, members of the public? We see none. All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion on a petition by Port NP Title Holder LLC for the acceptance of pedestrian easements in Congress Street and Boston Wharf Road is read into the record by the chair. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Uh, moving on to our next item on a joint petition by Seaport N slash P title holder LLC and the Seaport Square Development Company LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in South Boston, consisting of curb realignment, roadway, and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavement, street lights, street furniture, street trees, landscaping, irrigation infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, bike racks, bollards, refuse receptacles, and driveway curb cuts. The locations are Summer Street on its northeasterly side, generally at address number 400, southeast of Boston Wharf Road, and Congress Street on its north, uh, southwesterly side, generally at address number 395 between Boston Wharf Road and Pier 4 Boulevard, and Boston Wharf Road, generally between Congress Street and Summer Street. This was new business on March 26, 2020, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repairs Plan, 400 Summer Street, South Boston, six sheets, date April 16, 2020. Thank you, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. So this is the Boston Wharf Road specific repair plan and the hatched area in red is pedestrian easement that was just approved by this commission. The sidewalk design provides a minimum seven foot wide concrete sidewalk. And as we have some more real estate, as we approach Congress Street, we propose uh, cobble pavers and street trees, um, as well as some bike racks. Um, also, please note that there's a 100 foot wide loading dock um, that serves um, three loading bays that will that will serve buildings uh, on parcels N, E, and P, as well as a 30-foot wide garage entrance that allows for two-way access into the building's garage. And we also propose a new handicap, uh, the accessible ramp at the corner. This being said, we are also aware that this design may be modified a little bit based on the final design directive that we get from the city regarding uh, the Boston Wharf Road uh, uses and primarily the bikeway. And as I said before, my client is prepared to amend this as needed. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pran, sorry, Ms. Pran and Mr. Schmidt, uh, because the reason I'm saying it is because there are two Amy's. Uh, Amy Pran? Yep. All the utility costs that you need to support this project, uh, what is the primary street your utility connections are going to come out from? I'm going to see if it is Congress Street, or am I wrong on that front? Um, I could speak to that if you don't mind. Um, we're going to be pulling the, I'm sorry, the uh, sewer and storm will be coming out on Boston Wharf Road um, and water and electric and gas and others will be coming off of Congress Street. So, Ms. Pran, uh, you know, again, uh, as the fine work that you have done in the rest of this area, uh, at the end of the day, the streets will need some attention, the street segments and you all have been extremely correct perfect at uh, doing the necessary restoration work to the degree it needs to be to support the, the vitality of your projects uh, what can i assume on your part as to how the streets of congress street and the walk road is going to be uh, kept after you all are done with the construction and before you want your guests to occupy your building um, so Boston Wharf Road and Congress Street will be repaved um, fully. It's actually part of a separate um, action that'll be before you hopefully in the next year or so. Um, Mass dot or the city of Boston will be actually doing that work. We'll be designing and permitting it, but all the roadways are completely repaved. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. That's what I wanted to confirm, that somehow yes. uh, some uh, outsiders or your tenants are not looking 
or chief Oscar's team to uh, pick up the pieces. So you will be, you or the resources that are in play right now between mass theories, uh, that $10 million project, how will we will get done by outside resources that are under your control, meaning those contractors will do the work for the city's public work standards. Yes. yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Other questions or comments? Um, I actually, I have a, um, a question for, um, I saw that you updated the, the drawings to show the uh, the new curb and then you moved the catch basin so they showed up against the new curb. So thank you for making those changes. Um, I did have a question on um, the new catch basin, um, the one where it says rim equals 1570. Um, just trying to give you a general location where it is. It's actually the first new catch basin on the drawing if you're looking at the drawing from the left side. Yes. And then maybe yep. part of the uh, site plan review process, but I was just curious what the um, the reasoning was for the new catch basin. Uh, we're struggling with grade through here. It's very flat. Um, okay. While trying to trying to meet the garage elevation for floodplain issues, so we're we're battling um, a couple of elements here in regards to providing safe and accessible access on, within the street, on the sidewalk, and into the building, while trying to keep the building at a, uh, an elevation that will mitigate any potential flood issues. Okay. Thank you. One other comment is on the summer street, you're showing a bump out. And I think that we've gotten a little bit farther in our summer street design to know that that bump out doesn't work. Um, so I think that we acknowledge that there's gonna be something up there um, as it's gonna be the, you know, where where this staircase lets out. Um, but I don't, it's it's not gonna be that bump out in that particular location. So we, we don't want it on the plans, um, but we know that we're gonna come back to this and figure it out um, what that's gonna look like. Um, once they're just there, yeah. crosswalk and all that other stuff. Yeah, it, it, Ty, if you want to scroll to uh, Summer Street, and then we can come back to Congress. So on Summer Street, um, we are reconstructing the side, this is actually a bridge, and we're reconstructing the sidewalk bridge in front of the proposed 400 Summer Street building to provide an accessible cross slope. Right now, the sidewalk does not is non-compliant. And we are currently maintaining the curb line. We do have that proposed bump out that was going to be a temporary bituminous concrete bump out until the design that Amy just re um, Amy Cording just referenced is further developed. Um, from what I'm hearing now is that it's been developed, um, that design has, has moved along. So before we submit these mylars, we will coordinate with Amy Cording and make sure that we're presenting what is the appropriate thing to present at this time. Thank yeah, you, I think that like we acknowledge that there's going to be something up there, but uh, we having run our, you know, uh, where we think stuff's going to land on Summer Street, this won't be it. So we, we don't, I think, want a plan that's going to memorialize something that we're already sure we don't want. Sounds good. We will work this out offline <laughs> or online. <laughs> John, uh, as, as briefly as possible, uh, there's there was some conversations about a pedestrian condition, connections to Summer Street from, or am I mixing up projects? There is a pedestrian connection from, from Summer Street to Congress Street down a grand staircase that will be constructed between the, the two buildings on parcel N and parcel P. The staircase will be built as part of this project. Um, and there is also, um, uh, there are also um, accessible access will be provided. Um, I understand that there is a meeting scheduled next week to talk about that a little bit deeper with the BPDA and, and the Disabilities Commissions to uh, better understand how that will work itself out. So my first question, John, now is Fran, who is going to own that staircase? It's on private property. It's so, okay, so it means you will be granting a public access because it is still, let me ask the question, is it going to be a public? staircase um yes, yes. it will be public yeah. yep. sorry the answer is yes so you need to give us a easement through your private property because that staircase is still going to be a public path of travel correct john this is where you need to sort of connect the dots okay uh so it will be a private asset that is going to be used for public purposes yes it is yes yeah, you know, uh, 10 years later, uh, the staircase is going to be used, and it is if it is in a questionable state of repair, uh, someone's going to ask who should be maintaining it, or should I accidentally slip and fall? Okay, so 
John, you need to work those details out because I'm not sure whether those details are showing up on these plans. They cannot because it's on private property. But you, yet we speak of these connections between the two entities through the public process, and we just need to close the loop on this one. I understand. Okay. Yeah, Bye. thank you. We'll, we'll get back to you on that. Um, it's similar in Harbor Way as it goes to the L blocks. Um, but um, I apologize, it wasn't an action that we prepared right now, but let us get back to you on how to treat that. I'm just, I know all of y'all will do the right thing. That, that is your hallmark. Okay? So we just yeah. want to make sure that it gets done while the thought is in our head so that five years later, we are not scratching our heads to see uh, because the public is going to be using it. And then uh, I'm not even going to ask the questions of whether it's going to be properly lead, whether the access is going to post and all of that good stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah. So John, I know that you know the alphabet soup of all the questions that needs to be managed because this is still a public access path through private property. Mm -hmm. and we need to look after the public's interest right. to ensure their seamless passage through. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Other questions or comments? Um, we can speak to Congress Street if you like. Yep, if you want to scroll back up, Todd. Um, so along Congress Street from Boston Wharf Road to the I-90 off ramp, we will be re reconstructing that sidewalk um, with a new curb, uh, eight, eight foot minimal concrete pedestrian pathway, accessible pedestrian pathway. And then in the frontage zones, we have uh, cobble and granite pervious pavers with some uh, ground cover perennial plantings as well. We are relocating streetlights. We are also proposing um, a bump out. If um, if you scroll to the right, I think you can see that. Or on the right side of the drawing, you can see this bump out. And that is will be constructed now. And in the future, um, this will become a crosswalk that at the bottom of the grand staircase, a crosswalk that brings you across uh, Congress Street into the L4 block and through their uh, Harbor Way uh, improvements as well. So once that once the parcel across the street is developed, um, we will construct the ramp within this bump out. But right now we're, we're building that bump out. Um, so it's reserved for our future use. Street furniture includes trash receptacles. Um, there are also bike racks, but they are tucked on private property and not within the street layout. John, the entrance to the ramp, sorry, into the I-90 tunnel is from the mayor on this sketch just for orientation purposes? Sure. Um, so this is uh, Congress Street, and then you can see the I-90 ramp here, right? And uh, we've been working with uh, MassDOT um, for the last couple of years on securing the permits that are required in order to proceed with the work that impacts them. And I'm very happy you said that, which means they are in approval of the construction work. This construction will be done by you. So and all easements has to be squared off with right of entries and stuff from mass DOT. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, so uh, that's, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, that, that's the extent of our specific repairs. And there'll be an LMI for the specific repairs that are associated with the rest of the Seaport Square development? Yeah. There will be. Yes, it'll, it'll be. Um, uh, memorialized in an amendment to our master LMI. Great. Thank you. Right. Other questions or comments? Um, I did have a uh, question on uh, uh, Congress Street, on the first sheet of Congress Street. Um, I believe it's sheet two on your uh, set of six sheets. Um, so then uh, for the, it's kind of unclear um, if the dash line is the new curb and then the uh, solid line is the existing um, yeah. It was like to put the catch basin up against the um, the old curb line. At least that's what it has it appears to be. On the uh, first, yeah, that one right yeah, there. Yep. Yeah, okay. We'll we'll confirm that. We call okay. out relocating it, but we don't show. It. But yes, we'll we'll clarify that. Thank okay. you. And then I did have an additional comment on uh, Boston Wharf Road. So for that that new catch basin um, that you put in, it, it's unclear if it's going to be uh, within. Um, the driveway, or is it going to be? Is that what you propose? Yeah, right now it fall. It's actually it's within the that uh, long driveway opening, the hundred foot wide driveway opening. Okay, yeah. so then um, you know, actually we do we will have to take a look at that um, 
Yeah, we'll have to take a yeah. look at that. Then. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not standard practice, I understand, and we'll work with you yeah. to find a solution. Okay, thank you. And just one other thing, John. Um, so, you know, um, I know you had already gotten site plan approval for this work, but we did update our catch basin details to include, make sure um, the gutter mouths were included in the details. So I want to send those to you. Okay. Um, so I'll send those to you after the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Denise. Other questions or comments? Todd or Abby? I believe we're all set on this. Okay. And members of the public? We see none. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion on a joint petition by Seaport NP Title Holder LLC and Seaport Square Development Company LLC for the making of specific repairs in Summer Street, Congress Street, Boston Wharf Road, um, as read into the record by the chair and subject to the modifications on Boston Wharf Road. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to our next item on a joint petition Thank by you. Seaport NP Title Holder LLC and the Seaport Square Development Company LLC for the granting of a private utility license for the installation of new utility infrastructure within Congress Street, a public way in South Boston, located generally southwest of Pier 4 Boulevard. This was new business on March 26, 2020, and this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, License Plan, Congress Street, 400 Summer Street, South Boston, one sheet dated April 16, 2020. So this is a um, proposed conduit crossing uh, of four conduits across Congress Street from the L4 block, or I'm sorry, from the L5 block from the L block to um, parcel P. Um, it's very, it's similar to what we had per, uh, permitted several years ago at 121 Seaport Boulevard. And the idea is, the intent is that it'll allow WS to have inter, uh, uh, interconnected uh, connections between each parcels, which they all have, will have control over. Great. Questions or comments on the private utility crossing? Um, actually, I just have a question, John. So as part of our uh, site plan process, um, were you provided with any of the depths of our existing utilities? We, yeah, there are a lot of utilities out there. Um, and early in the process, we also did some test pits, and we have the record drawings. We, we have volumes of information for what's in Congress Square, I mean, Congress Street, um, as well as that's, uh, to be honest with you, we've tried to install sewer in Congress Street to serve these parcels, and it's just not feasible. Um, because the street is so busy, um, and we're fairly confident that our utility crossing, our, our section there is, is, uh, is correct, correctly represents what's the physical condition. Okay, and now what type of material is this proposed deck? It's four, in, uh, it's four six inch PVC in a concrete encased casement. Okay, and there's no uh, steam in this area? Uh, no, there is not. Concrete case, yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Danny, sorry. Uh, just following yeah. up on Ms. Devlin's uh, thought patterns here. So since you have to do that little gymnastics to get past the two layers of the conduits. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking at the conduit crossing sketch, section <laughs> AA. Okay, so you've got two water lines that are fairly close by. You are trying to get a almost three and a half foot duck bank. Uh, I'm going to assume you will be as diligent and careful as possible so as not to cause any drama. Yeah, can you blow that thing up a little bit? Yeah, so it is when you're going from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen and when you're trying to go from elevation 40 down to 10. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have a very little space and you have almost a four foot wide duck bank that's going to have a larger hole so it, it, I'm going to, I'll be quiet but uh, just look after the water and sewer assets you've got electrical stuff I'm going to assume that you there are more many settlement issues but waters you have a high pressure yeah uh, that 16 inch one that you got two 16 inch ones right uh, yes it is okay yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a sensitive construction or installation with all the utilities in the street as well as the traffic at the, at the street. Um, 
So I imagine this will be, I mean, the, this will primarily probably be night work. And, um, you know, the contractor who is working on this is familiar with Seaport and has been working in the Seaport area for a while and is familiar okay. with the challenges it brings. All right. Yeah, was this included as part of the, um, the site plan process, John? I don't believe it was because there was okay. um, no no BWC utilities impacted directly. So okay. Dennis, uh -huh. I was, sorry, Dennis, I suspect okay. I don't think it made its way to you, so that's why I'm kind of pointing it out over here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm, I'm just a tiny bit nervous uh, having put many of these conduits at various locations. At, at midnight, you find obstructions okay. and settlement issues. And that is not the time uh, for Ms. Devlin and her team to find an awkward rupture. So I, I'd like to suggest that if um, if you vote to approve this today, we will um, we will wait till we hear back from Boston Water and Sewer, incorporate or try to address any comments they have, and get their blessing before we make the mylar submission. Yeah, we can make it yeah, contingent upon our approval, Chris. Uh, that would be more than appreciated. Um, and then, John, if you could, uh, after the meeting, if you don't, if you could send me that plan, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Par. Thanks, Denise. Other questions or comments? Todd or Abby? We're all set on this one. Okay. Members of the public? None. All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. Uh, again, contingent upon final sign off from Boston Water and Sewer. To make a motion to approve a joint petition by Seaport NP Title Holder LLC and Seaport Square Development Company LLC for the granting of a private utility license uh, for the installation of new utility infrastructure within Congress Street, South Boston, located generally uh, southwest of Pier 4 Boulevard. Second. All in favor? Uh, and, 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 uh, yeah, subject to Boston Water Mature. Thank you. Well, I apologize, Joe. Thank you. Uh, is it seconded with that, uh, with the contingency? Second. Perfect. Thanks, Amy. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Thank you. Moving on to our next item on a petition by Seaport N slash P title holder LLC for the granting of a projection license for the installation of canopies over portions of the following public ways in South Boston. The locations are Summer Street on its northeastly side, generally southeast of Boston Wharf Road, and Congress Street on its southwestly side, generally west of Pier 4 Boulevard. Yeah. Location, uh, this was new business on uh, March 26, 2020, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, license plan for Canopy 400 Summer Street, uh, Boston, two sheets dated March 19, 2020. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. So along Congress Street, we have three canopies proposed. Um, they do, they, the projection is less than two thirds of the sidewalk width, which is um, standard uh, practices, as well as the height above the sidewalk varies between 10.3 feet and 12.7 feet, which is greater than the 10 foot requirement that the city um, asks. Uh, the, the canopies are heat traced and internally drained and they will also, um, in this application, we are provide, uh, they we're providing uh, an ask for a potential sign in the future. The sign has not been designed yet, but we're requiring that, we're asking for that space now so we don't have to come back here in the future. On Summer Street, we have four locations. Those do not exceed more than two thirds of the existing sidewalk width. They range in height between 15.5 and 17.5 feet above the sidewalk, greater than the 10 foot requirement. These two are heat traced, internally drained, and have um, a caveat for future signage. Great. Thanks, John. Questions or comments from the commissioners on the, uh, on the projection license? John, do we have an architectural rendering of what these canopies or awnings might look like? That can be easily shown today in the format which we are doing right now. I, yeah, I, I do not have one with me, okay. um, and I don't know if anyone on the call does. I don't think so, because normally uh, what is being presented here are, are the stuff which is submitted to us, and most yeah. of the architectural drawings are not submitted. So this is just an editorial comment on my part, yeah. and we uh, 
work through these uh, this new yeah. format of meeting to send us our technical drawings yeah. and or be prepared to show those things from your side. Understood. If this was you know a month or two months ago, I would have had the I would have been part of my board presentation. Yeah. <laughs> Just the next next I, I appreciate stuff. that. Okay. Thank you for that, Parag. Sorry, but you, you said it is heat traced, it's, and you might put some signage, but is it going to be lit or just static signs? I don't know if that's and been... It will likely be lit. Okay. Uh, just, just normal lighting, right? No, no neon. No neon. Thank you. Uh, other questions or comments from the commissioners? Todd Robbie. I'll just mention that the signage will need to go through BPDA design review uh, once it's been finalized by the project. Of course. Yes. Thank you, Todd. Okay. Members of the public? None. Okay. I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion on a petition by Seaport and P Title Holder LLC for the granting of a projection license on Summer Street and Congress Street, as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Stay safe, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. We're going to our next item uh, on a petition by the Mount Vernon Company for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to the following public ways in Brighton, North Beacon Street on its northerly side, address number 37, west of Everett Street. And Everett Street on its westly side, uh, north of North Beacon Street. This was new business on March 26, 2020. And this has shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, pedestrian easement plan number 37, Beacon Street, Everett Street, Boston, Alston, one sheet dated September 18, 2019. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, was good uh, members of the commission. My name is Paul Rufo. And, um, uh, when I'm not stuck in my basement, I'm typically uh, uh, wearing a, a jacket and tie. So forgive me for that, but thank you for going forward with this hearing um, and, uh, and keeping the business going as best you can. I much appreciate it. So the Mount Vernon Company has two um, uh, uh, petitions. Uh, the first one, as you've just read, is this pedestrian easement. Uh, with me today is Tony Donato, who looks, looks much more uh, well kept than, than I am keeping and uh, he will walk you through in a, in a moment the pedestrian easement this is a project uh, uh, that's been fully approved actually under construction in the um, Alston section of the Alston Brighton neighborhood uh, on the corner of North Beacon Street and Everett Street and uh, the first item is a pedestrian easement uh, that Tony has shown on his uh, plan uh, coming up Everett Street and uh, and then going across North Beacon Street. So, Tony, please take us through the, if you can. Uh, yes, um, Anthony Donato from um, Hancock Associates, and as Paul just mentioned, uh, uh, can you can you see my screen? Or do, uh, not yet. Uh, so do you want to pull up the pedestrian easement plan, or should I share my screen? Todd, what's easier for you? Uh, if he can share his screen, that's probably easier. But if he is having technical difficulties, I can try to pull it up. Uh, yeah, that up and bring that up in Paul or Anthony, if it's possible to uh, also see just a rendering of the building to, to parse with your questions to help put this in context, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> can you see that screen now? Yep. Um, My apologies for that. Um, Perfect. Okay, great. Um, thank you. So, uh, as you can see, there's some landscaping uh, features that are proposed along North Beacon Street. Uh, one, one quick thing for we're on the pedestrian easement portion before we get to the specific repair portion. Do you have the pedestrian easement plan? I do. Is that is that presented on the screen right now? Uh, no, the it's looking like the specific repair plan right now. Oh. Um, oh, there you go. Sorry. So, as part of the agreement, the um, developer will ma maintain the sidewalk as part of the LMI 
agreement uh, and part of the sidewalk here is a uh, is a portion of three three and three point four eight feet along North Beacon Street and easement extends uh, approximately um, six point four feet along Everett Street. And that is to uh, maintain the, the, the planters, the, the, the desired width for pedestrian access along both streets. We are proposing some planters along the guard line of both North, Beach Street, North Beacon Street and Everett Street. Okay. Uh, questions by the commission on the pedestrian easement? Tony? Sonny. Mr. Bernardo? Uh, yeah. You are giving this pedestrian easement to support uh, enhanced landscape program for either side of the building. Uh, thank you for that. But by the time we are through, there are two steps which you are looking for. One is the approval of the easements, and then the second is the approval of the specific repair plans. My question to you is, what is the net sidewalk width that is going to remain for the pedestrian traffic? We are going to keep the sidewalk which we have on that street, or is it going to be a much less after you are done with the uh, specific repair plan? And I don't want to cheat by looking at the specific repair plan. Do you follow what I'm saying? Um, are you asking if we the changing along the street, existing, or if we can be maintaining? Mr. Donato, my question is, uh, is you, you are petitioning the commission for two hearings, one for the pedestrian easement and the other is for the sidewalk repair. I want to make sure that the sidewalk repair, specific repair plan, the dimensions are such where you have given us an adequate pedestrian easement over here to support whatever the landscaping program. So, in your specific repair plans, what is the net sidewalk width that is there after you are done putting all the trees, which we are very supportive of? Okay, um, can you see that that plan? Thank you. That, okay. That, it would be 8.1 feet. Thank you. Along North Beacon Street. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you too well the first time. And then it's um, there's a detail on. Um, so it's a, about 10 feet along Everett Avenue. Excellent. So this means after you are done with enhancing the facade and the streetscape, uh, the sidewalk experience is better than what it has been today. So we applaud your work. Thank you. I'll bring back to this. Specific of the uh, pedestrian easement. Other questions or comments on the pedestrian easement? Did, did somebody ask for a rendering of the? Um... If you if you have one, that'd be great. the next hearing um well we're going to that. Uh, any other comments on the pedestrian easement by the members of the commission todd robbie okay. members of the public None. uh anthony thank you for pulling that up that's, uh, that's helpful. um all right um, i'll entertain a motion on the pedestrian easement I'll make a motion to accept a petition by the Mount Vernon Company for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement on North Beacon Street and Everett Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
So moved. Moving on to our next item on a petition uh, by the Mount Vernon Company for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Brighton, consisting of curb, sidewalk, pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated street trees, landscaping, and driveway curb cuts. Locations of North Beacon Street on its northerly side, address number 37, west of Everett Street, and Everett Street on its westly side, north of North Beacon Street, and Hartford Street on its southerly side, generally west of Everett Street. This was new business on March 26, 2020, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan, number 37 North Beacon Street, Everett Street, Harvester Street, Boston, Alston, two sheets dated March 10th, 2020. Paul and Anthony. Yes, thanks. I'll just turn it right over to uh, to Anthony, tell me, uh, to walk us through this repair. Sure. So a lot of the project frontage will be installing new sidewalk um, to city standards, um, concrete, concrete sidewalks, as mentioned, along um, North Beacon Street and Everett Street and a portion of Harvester Street. Um, during the last month's hearing, there was a couple of questions that we were asked to follow up with the lighting department, specifically if there, there are a couple of light poles here on this project, there's one right here and there's another one on Everett Street, we were asked to confirm with the lighting department if the fixtures um, uh, match the existing fixtures in the areas. And I did follow up with the lighting department, have confirmed that these are LED and they are appropriate for this area. Um, there's one other item that um, Amy had mentioned regarding drop off in front of yep. the block. And um, at, as a follow up, there's a um, dedicated drop-off area access to the building um, located um, along Sin Sinclair Place. Right here, there's a dedicated drop-off. So this, this is not intended to be a drop-off area at that, at that point. Um, there's one other comment that I did get from Denise last night regarding uh, her request to uh, depict the, the, the structures uh, on the street, and I believe that this, I had sent over a plan this morning that showed that there's no conflict with the manhole on Harvester Street. And here's that plan right now. Um, there's the uh, catch basin in question, and there's a couple other question, catch basins along North Beacon Street, but there's no uh, conflicts with the new sidewalk. Yeah, thank you, uh, Anthony, for sending that. Um, so, you know, the reason, you know, we wanted, we appreciate you putting the note on there about installing the gutter mouth, so that's great. We are, um, thank you. And then the one on Harvester Street, you know, we're concerned. We just want to make sure we can get a gutter mouth on that catch basin and it's not uh, in the ramping. That's all. Yeah, it looks like there is a there is a gutter mouth there from what I could see on Google Street View. Okay. Screen. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Amy, any uh, further questions about the pickup or the sort of the break in the furnishing zone on North Beacon Street? Not really. I mean, it's not ideal, but they need a break because it's a front door and there is a pickup drop off area. I, I think we just didn't want this to read like where you should be stopping because it's not okay. a place to stop. Okay. Other questions or comments? Uh, Chief, just a tiny editorial thing, Anthony. If you can zoom in on your specific repair to the Harvester Street side, which is to the top of the plans. Okay, if you can. Okay, perfect. So Anthony, uh, just to uh, bring to your attention, the city has 35 foot roadway layouts. Harvester is a 35. And when we have that type of a layout, we have two five foot sidewalks and a 25 foot roadway, not a 24.8 and 5.1 plus or minus. Those are standard because when survey people go uh, give you reconstruction service, this is what happens. So you need to exercise some judgment. So using that as a point of departure, if you can move that down to North Beacon Street, can you scroll down to North Beacon? Hopefully, when you are done with this project, our plans will reflect that you are giving us a 10 foot sidewalk. And you know, like your 8.1s are actually 8 feet. So, in a sense, you will have a 10 foot sidewalk on one side with your Eastman, and I think a 12 foot one. Just make sure that your decimals and everything are reflective of what our standard layouts are. 
Okay. Okay. Other comments by the commission? Todd Robbie? Okay. Members of the public? None. All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion on a petition by the Mount Vernon Company for the making of specific repairs within North Beacon Street, Everett Street, and Harvester Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Our next item is our petition by Crown Castle Fiber for the grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install a new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Dorchester. The locations are Babson Street, generally at address number five between Blue Hill Avenue and Norfolk Street, and Blue Hill Avenue north of Bab Babson Street. This was new business on March 26, 2020, and this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan 5 Babson Street, Boston, Mattapan, one sheet, dated February 18, 2020. Okay, um, this is Shelly Cullen. Can you hear me? <laughs> um, hi, Shelly Cullen. Can you guys hear me? Again, okay, there's a little bit of a lag, but we can hear you. Okay, I am having some technical difficulties. I had everything ready to go on my computer, and I, it keeps dropping off so i call i'm calling in on my phone very good um so um good morning everybody uh chairman osgood and commission members um this uh, i'm shelly cullen with axis engineering and i'm representing crown castle for this project um this is a lead company project with no participants and this is the one that was requested by boston water and sewer to move the micro trench across the street because of the um, the water main that's going in on Babson Street. So it's a it's about 317 feet. There is one hand pole in here um, that we had to put in to break into the existing micro trench. We did move that out of the way. It was um, in the handicap ramp area, so that was moved. And otherwise. Um, I'm open to your questions. Thank you, Shelley. Um, can you, and these, this work by Crown Castle is essentially, correct me if I'm wrong, for fiber connections to Boston Public Schools? Um, you know, I don't know. This was a, this is an existing trench. I'm not sure the, the main reason, I'm not sure what, what it's connecting because the main purpose of it is really just to move it from uh, from where it was located. Got it. Okay. Members of the commission, Denise, questions on uh, uh, or comments for Shelley? Chief, it is possible that your question is correct. Where when that new public library went in there? Other comments by members of the commission? Todd or Abby? We're all set on this. Members of the public? We see you. Good. I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of location within Babson Street and Blue Hill Ave is read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving Thank you very next. much. Um, and, and Todd, I just want to ask you, would it be easier, the other three that I have on for new business, um, would it be easier for you if I just sent you an email right now? Um, I, no, you just hang on and we'll get to the new business projects in a few minutes. All right, my apologies. Uh, thanks, I'll be here. Thanks. Thanks, Shelley. All right, our next item is on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for the grant of location with lead company status and no participants for new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Roxbury, Albany Street, generally between address number 906 and Eustis Street, and Dearborn Street, generally at Eustis Street, Albany Street, and Dearborn Square. This was new business on March 26, 2020. And this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, 906 Albany Street, Boston, Roxbury, two sheets, dated February 20th, uh, sorry, February 2020.
Todd, do we know who's presenting this one? Uh, should be Chris Murray. Last I knew, he was um, dialed in. Um, he may be having trouble unmuting, perhaps. Again, star six to unmute or mute your phone. Uh, Todd, is Chris doing the next several for Crown Castle? Yes, my understanding is that he was presenting uh, 9 through 14 on our public hearing agenda. Great. So, uh, there's somebody else from Crown Castle who's on who may want to jump in. Is there anyone else from Crown Castle who can speak to uh, uh, agenda item number 9? I'm sorry I'm not prepared to, uh, to address those projects. Guys, this is Shelly. Yep, that, that, that's fine, Shelly. All right, so uh, if it works for Stephanie Seskin, why don't we move to agenda item number 15 and then we can pick up the uh, Crown Castle items uh, after we uh, talk about the neighborhood slow street. The two neighborhood slow street. Stephanie, does that work for you? Yep. Great. All right. So moving on to agenda item number 15, a petition by the Boston Transportation Department for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Dorchester, consisting of curb realignment, roadway, sidewalk, and driveway curb cut reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavements, speed humps, and bean islands. The locations are Hannon Street, generally between Norfolk Street and Morton Street, Corbett Street, generally between Norfolk Street and Evans Street, Nelson Street, generally between Norfolk Street and Evans Street, Hawkins Street at Corbett Street, Crowell Street, generally between Norfolk Street and Evans Street. Capon Street, generally between Norfolk Street and Evans Street. Dyer Street, generally north of Evans Street. Stanton Street, generally between Norfolk Street and Evans Street. Uh, Thetford Avenue, generally between Norfolk Street and Evans Street. Milton Avenue, generally between Norfolk Street and Evans Street. Edson Street, generally between Norfolk Street and Milton Avenue. This was new business on March 26, 2020, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Neighborhood Slow Streets Program, Redefining Our Community, Dorchester South, 12 sheets dated April 23rd, 2020. Take it away, Stephanie. <laughs> uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, so uh, we're here with our Neighborhood Slow Streets Program in the uh, Redefining Our Community zone. Um, Neighborhood Slow Street is the city's proactive program to increase safety and quality of life within our residential neighborhoods. Um, we are using physical traffic calming design to self-enforce a 20 mile per hour regulatory speed limit. Um, neighborhood zones are prioritized through an objective analysis. We aim to work in communities with higher populations of youth, older adults with disabilities. Um, these are groups who are more likely to suffer serious injury or fatality in a traffic crash. Um, we also prioritize areas based on crash history and proximity to um, community places like parks and libraries, schools, uh, rail stations, things like that. Um, we have been working with the Rock community uh, for about a year and a half. Um, they were prioritized in fall 2018. Mm -hmm. um, we have done community walks, presentations, we have tabled, um, we have held office hours, and we've also done direct mailings. Um, all of the immediate uh, butters to any of the curb line changes that we are uh, proposing have been informed about those specific designs adjacent to their property. Um, a couple of quick facts about uh, the Rock community, about 43% of the households here have a child under the age of 18. Um, about 7% of residents are 65 or older. Um, and it's also in proximity to um, Tech Boston Academy, just to the east, uh, Boston International High School, just to the south. Um, and there is a uh, park playground within the proposed zone. Um, I am joined by Radu Nan from Kittleson and Associates, who will walk through um, our design. Good morning. Um, as Stephanie just mentioned, um, we are proposing to install uh, 22 speed humps um, in this zone to uh, um, assist with the lowering of the speed limit within this, this, this zone to 20 miles an hour. Um, speed humps are located evenly um, along the uh, uh, streets noted um, by the chair. Um, the spacing between the speed humps are between 165 and 300 feet, depending on the length of uh, the streets. Um, 
in locating um, the speed humps, uh, we had performed speed in uh, field inspections um, to make sure that um, these installations are free of uh, utility um, conflicts. Those include uh, water casings, manhole covers, and also driveways. So we do not want to block access to uh, individual driveways. The speed humps um, are designed to leave a one foot opening on either side of um, the street for, uh, to maintain existing drainage. Um, any questions about the speed humps and where they're located? Uh, none here, other members of the commission? Yeah, actually, um, Raju, Stephanie, um, and team, um, I know we haven't sent you our comments, so I'm going to go briefly go through them during the uh, presentation. But for the speed humps, um, I know you, you always state this, um, you know, obviously we don't want the speed humps on top of our castings. And what we'll do is we'll send you a map of uh, our facilities in the area just to, just to, ha just to give it to you. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. In addition, we are uh, providing the, the flexibility of the engineer to, um, to adjust the, the location of the speed hump if a casting is. Um, you know, within a range of um, of a proposed uh, lo location. location. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, um, I will be scrolling on to our f our first two sets of intersection um, of, um, improvement. Uh, the first intersection to the left is Norfolk, Austin, and Corbett. Um, this is one location where um, we have a, a reported fatality. Um, so we are proposing to um, expand the sidewalk and create um, along Nelson Street, which is a 40-foot uh, public um, roadway. Um, the, the, the sidewalk extension is typical six foot uh, from the existing northern edge of the um, uh, street. Uh, it leaves 20 feet um, opening along Nelson in the future. Um, the uh, Nelson is a one-way street going out towards Norfolk. Uh, Corbett Street is a one-way street going south away from Norfolk. Uh, the pedestrian island proposed between Corbett Street and Nelson Street uh, would slow down the movement um, from Norfolk onto Corbett um, and also provide a, um, a refuge for pedestrians that are making a very wide um, and, and honestly a circuitous um, problem right now. They have to go from well, one corner um, to the little um, um, circle between the corner between Corbett and Nelson and then back to, to Norfolk. So this shortens that the travel path but also uh, limits the exposure that pedestrians um, are, are um, uh, open to to uh, the traffic. Um, the, uh, the future openings for Corbett Street, because this will be, and it is a one-way street southbound, is 16 feet. And the opening for the left movement between Nelson and Corbett Street um, is also 16, street, oh, 16 feet, sorry. Any questions about this location? Um, actually, um, yeah, I just had a, a question. I will backtrack, I apologize, but for Nelson Street. So, um, you know, first of all, we appreciate you um, including our comments about the um you know what we have like an existing catch base and you just change the uh the you know the cover you keep the sump and then you move the drop in let up north which we appreciate um you know it, the what we prefer is if you can to just put a catch base in five and then tie it in to the existing drain if you can but the only thing is uh, a lot of the times we make that comment to you about uh keeping the um the sump and then moving the um you know, uh, installing a drop inlet north, uh, excuse me, upstream, is because uh, a lot of the times we find that we can't do that. We can't put in uh, a new catch base and then connect to the drain because okay. of the utilities and, and so forth. Uh, sure. It is the preferred method if you can. Um, you know, and if you can't, what you have is fine. The only thing is um, we show the uh, proposed 12 inch uh, PVC pipe. If you have a drop inlet, it has to be a 15 inch pipe. And if it's uh, the steam in the area and you have to put a uh, duct line pipe in, uh, it can be 16 inch for the duct line. Um, Understood, yes, we can yeah. make those changes. Um, okay. Um, all right, and then, um, so, and then the other comments that we had uh, for Corbett at uh, Hopkins, 
I think it's not on the screen, but if you just if you pan it down so like you can see the north side, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, see where it says abandoned existing catch basin. Um, yes. So yes. the question that we had was, um, you know, where will the uh, abandoned catch basin be plugged? Um, yes, we can work on that. We can plug the the uh, um, the pipe right at the the exit out of the catch basin. Would that work? Okay. Yeah. If you can, um, you know. Uh, you know, show me your proposal, and then if you know when you can, you know, send, uh, send it, send it back to us. That'll be that'll be great. Um, <coughs> thank you. I pre you know appreciate it. Um, yeah, and then just uh, general comments. Um, you know, just oh, and then uh, excuse me. Same thing with uh, Hopkins and Corbett. So on the south side, right near PR five, mm -hmm. uh, we just want to make sure that you can put a gutter mouth on that catch basin. Um, and if you can't, you know, um, you can actually just move. To move the catch basin. Mm -hmm. Yes, that that, that that um, edge stone is designed to be long enough, six foot uh, at a minimum of six foot to to accommodate a gutter mouth uh, edge okay. stone. Okay. Yeah, um, and then just general comments uh, for the whole project. Uh, again, you know, our, fa our favorite uh, comment about the gutter mouth. Yeah, we just want to make sure that we have the gutter mouths uh, on new castings, and then if there are any on the uh, the old castings uh, for anything within the limit of new sidewalk, and or if they're broken, that we need to have them uh, there. Uh, and do not dump wax. Excuse me, could you repeat that? Um, so we just going to make sure we have do not dump wax on all the castings, the catch basins um, within the limit of work, and uh, yeah. mulch um, in the limit of work for the you know for yeah. existing proposed. So right. Uh, yeah. Thanks. No, yes. We've included that detail on the, the construction plans. Absolutely. Yep. And I will. I know I mentioned it, but I will send you all this after the um, you know, the meeting. So. No, I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Radu. Sorry, Radu, PJ, uh, and Stephanie. Nicely done. Very nice work here. Uh, just a minor, minor point on Nelson and Norfolk Street, the new island that is being created. If you can. Thank you. That one. Uh, there are at least about three Edison uh, utility lines that are going to be below the new install which you are going to be installing. Do you yeah. have sense of the depth of those Edison lines? Uh, you will uh, hopefully hopefully the depth of the Edison lines is not going to impact you being able to put at least 16 inch three. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Install. So just just verify that little part because I'm not sure whether that was uh, that comment made its way through to you. Yes, okay. we'll, we'll verify that. I appreciate verify. it. And that's like a general comment to any new uh, placement of the movement of curve lines. Of when we are putting new curves, when we are creating new islands. Okay. Understood. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nicely done. Very nice. Thank you. And actually, I do have another general comment to make. Um, so in regards to the uh, the pipe, so if there's less than three feet of uh, cover, we need, and you know, it can't be PVC. It's got to be the duct line or um, RCP pipe. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, no, we appreciate it. Uh, we'll um, look to add 16 inch uh, duct iron if we don't have the proper cover over it. Um, or a 15 inch PVC if, if it's deeper. Okay, great, thank you. Radu, sorry, uh, wish I picked these things up early. That little, the new island which you are creating, you have fair amount of uh, sidewalk, uh, ADA compatible. Are there going to be any vertical devices on that pork chop uh, to uh, bring to the attention of slow block drivers? that there's an island over there. Anything vertical? Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, we're installing warning signs um, on the edge uh, along Norfolk Street. The edge uh, between Nelson and, and Corbett Street needs to be fairly clear in order for a uh, fair uh, Okay, so there will be something vertical. Uh, we'll need yeah. that so Brilliant. Yeah. Yep. Thank you so much. 
other uh, other general comments or specific comments to these two intersections before we move uh, to the next set of uh, changes? All right, Roddy, why don't you uh, take us on to the next set of intersections? Yeah. So the next intersection is between um, Hopkins Street and Corbett Street. Um, Hopkins Street is a one-way street uh, teeing into Corbett Street. Corbett Street um, is a one-way street going southbound. Um, we are proposing to extend the edge line on Corbett Street and Nelson to uh, make this intersection a you know, nine-degree intersection uh, to promote um, a slower approach of Hopkins drivers um, to this intersection. Uh, with this addition, um, we are narrowing the crosswalk on Hopkins Street um, to 20, 20 feet and providing directional ramps. Um, we had also looked at um, the possibility of providing crosswalks on Corbett. However, sight distance around there to curve north of this location prohibits that. Um, would not create a, a safe condition for a crosswalk. So uh, we have stuck with uh, providing um, a safe pedestrian circulation on Hopkins. Um, the, um, the, the driveway just um, south of uh, the new pedestrian ramps is going to be reconstructed. And um, as Denise just mentioned, we are proposing to abandon an existing catch basin and install a new catch basin to uh, maintain uh, positive drainage within this intersection. Questions on this intersection or comments? Chief, sorry, yep. Chief, uh, in uh, just the housekeeping uh, issue that needs to be sorted out between the designer and uh, our chief, Todd Limey. Yep. So, uh, Radu, can you uh, stand to the bottom corner of this plan sheet? Right, and you can zoom in on the title block. Uh, let's say it's made rules. Okay, so these, these plans have a uh, we record these plans both in our records office and wherever else. And I think the title block says neighborhood slow streets program redirect. It, it doesn't give any indication to the intersection, and there are major improvements to this intersection. So I did bring this thing up, uh, start the specific repair title block so that when these plans get filed, it gets filed correctly because we don't have a street called neighborhood slow sticks program redefining up. I mean, that's a program, that's a project. Specific repairs are for the intersection itself. So please work with Mr. Liming so that when the mylas come for us to sign, that it is reflected correctly. Okay? Understood, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, Farah, um, I can let you know, we looked at that and um, some of these sheets, because they have so many streets that are being impacted on a single sheet, the title block started, um, it was just overcrowded, so we, um, the streets are listed in that note above the title block and we'll be sure when we go to the registry that all of the relevant streets are input into the system um, and we will highlight the streets as well um, for uh, the plans and records archives uh, when, the, yeah. when they're brought downstairs. We'll make sure that's taken care of. Todd, I don't want to create an administrative headache for the consultants. Uh, where they are putting speed humps, you know, I'm less concerned. But when there's an intersection where there are so many assets that are moving, okay, like sheet four, sheet seven, I'm sorry, sheet four, sheet five has to show. Okay, so they are, so strike a balance where the, the scope of work warrants the speed intersection name. Understood. We'll do. Yes, we can update those. All right, Roger, you want to take us to Edson and Milton? Yes. Um, Edson and Milton um, is a um, uh, an intersection uh, on the um, eastern edge of the zone. Um, it's also located near, near the um, Tech Boston Academy. Um, this location um, has a, a history of, so uh, uh, I apologize, let me provide some context. Milton Street um, is a one-way street heading into this intersection uh, from Norfolk to Edson, and then it continues as a two-way street south of this intersection. Edson Street um, is a one-way street going northbound towards Norfolk, away from this intersection. 
um, uh, we had um, recorded a um, number of uh, citizen um, reports that uh, because of the, the wide nature of, of, of this intersection, um, drivers tend to uh, uh, dismiss the, the one-way uh, circulation of Edson and Milton and, and make the wrong maneuver, you know, in, in error. Um, and um, that uh, wide open uh, intersection also allows for, for fast speeds um, to travel through this intersection. Uh, as a remedy, we are proposing uh, the installation of a roundabout uh, with curb extensions that, um, that would uh, promote the deflection of the horizontal deflection of um, the vehicular path to uh, lower the operating speeds through this, this wide intersection. Um, one of the main reasons uh, the roundabout was chosen is to also maintain access um, to all um, driveways, existing driveways on the perimeter of this intersection. Um, and, and that is maintained through the circular pattern um, that the, uh, the uh, roundabout operations uh, dictate. Um, with the addition of the roundabout, we are also proposing installing uh, crosswalks both on the northern legs uh, on the Edson Street and um, Milton Street, and also um, a crosswalk on the su southern portion of uh, Milton at the southern end of the, the roundabout. Um, the, um, uh, the center of the island um, includes a mountable section um, with a mountable curb um, and scarred concrete to deter smaller vehicles from crossing onto it. However, that maintains uh, maneuverability for emergency vehicles or larger vehicles such as delivery trucks. Um, the opening between the mountable curb and the existing uh, edge line is going to be 16 feet, and uh, the, uh, the, the practical opening between vertical curves is going to be 20 feet within the intersection um, through that multiple um, area. In a, yeah, um, sorry. So in, a, in addition um, to the reconstruction um, of, of sidewalks and the expansion of the sidewalks, the addition of uh, pedestrian ramps, uh, we're also relocating we're proposing to relocate uh, existing street lighting um, to the, the new edge um, of uh, the curb um, from from where they are currently installed. Got it. And street lighting signed off on that. Yes, we've we've uh, circulated these plans uh, to the street lighting group. Coordinate with them. Other questions or comments on the Edson and Milton intersection? Um, yeah, I just have uh, one comment for on uh, Milton Avenue. So right near number 57, um, I quite, oh, wait till you zoom in, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah. So right near 57, there's a hydrant there. Um, so we were curious what you were planning on doing to the hydrant, because it looks like, um, you know, our comment is it should be uh, protected look and uh, be located within a panel. Um, of a sidewalk. It looks like it may be located between a proposed panel and an existing sidewalk. That's correct. We can um, extend the, the, the reconstruction um, okay. of the panel and we'll, we'll make a note for that hydrant to be protected during, during reconstruction. Okay, great. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Well, there any other sections that you want, you want to highlight for us? Um, I think this is the, uh, the last location. Everything else uh, would be speed hump installations in this zone. Okay. Other questions or comments uh, by the commission on the entirety of the project? Todd or Abby? We're all set on this. All right. Members of the public? None. All right. I'll uh, entertain a motion uh, to approve this item. I'll make a motion on a petition by the Boston Transportation Department for the making of specific repairs in Hannon Street, Corbett Street, Nelson Street, Hopkins Street, Crom Crowell Street, Cap Capon Street, Dyer Street, Stanton Street, 
Thetford Street, Milton Ave, and Edson Street, as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, moving on to our uh, next item on the public hearing agenda before living back to Crown Castle. Uh, our next item is on a petition by the Boston Transportation Department for making uh, for making specific repairs within the following public ways in Dorchester, concert, consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavement, speed humps, and a raised crosswalk. The locations are Norwell Street, generally between Harvard Street and Carmen Street, Radcliffe Street, generally between Harvard Street and Vassar Street, Elmont Street, generally between Vassar Street and Waterloo Street, Shafter Street, generally between Vassar Street and Waterloo Street, Carmen Street, generally between Radcliffe Street and Vassar Street, Vassar Street, generally at Carmen Street, Ripley Road and Shafter Street, and Ripley Road, generally between Harvard Street and Vassar Street. This was new business on March 26, 2020, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Pacific Repair Plan, Neighborhood Slow Streets Program, Washington, Harvard, Norwell, Dorchester, North, each sheet, dated April 23rd, 2020. Um, again, I'm Stephanie Sethman. I work uh, in the Boston Transportation Department. Um, the Washington, Harvard, Norwell uh, area is uh, a zone that we have prioritized through our Neighborhood Slow Streets program, um, which is our effort to increase safety and quality of life uh, for our residential neighborhoods using physical traffic calming to self-enforce a 20 mile per hour regulatory speed limit. Um, neighborhood zones are prioritized in objective analysis, um, looking at uh, demographics such as um, households with youth, uh, older adults, people with disabilities, um, as well as crash history and proximity to community places such as uh, parks, schools, libraries, etc. Um, Washington Harvard Norwell was prioritized in the fall of 2018. Um, about 38% of the households here have a child under the age of 18, and 10% um, of residents are age 65 or older. Um, the zone is bounded by the Fairmont line, um, and uh, residents have access to um, the station just to the north of the lands. Uh, we're working with this community via um, yeah, walk. Uh, Tabling at community events, um, holding office hours at nearby libraries, um, and all of the immediate fodder through our uh, curb line changes have been informed about the specifics of those curb line changes, and we have made ourselves available to talk through their questions um, related to the design, the construction, um, and the expected uh, maintenance, including us. Uh, no clearance um, if it ever snows in Boston again. Um, I'm joined by Radu Nan with Kittleson and Associates, uh, who will walk through uh, the plans. Hi, good morning again. I'm Radu Nan with Kittleson and Associates. Um, to support the uh, new proposed speed limit within this zone of 20 miles an hour, uh, we're proposing to install 18 speed humps um, along the uh, uh, neighborhood street. Um, the speed humps are generally located or spaced um, approximately 170 to 250 feet apart um, and evenly distributed um, along the streets to promote uh, an, an even uh, speed, um, uh, traveling speed within those sections. Um, the, uh, the speed hump locations um, for field inspected um, to be clear of uh, existing utility features such as um, water castings, uh, manholes, catch basins, uh, and also located away um, from driveways to maintain access to private property. Any questions about uh, speed home locations? Specific. Yeah, um, I know I said the same thing last time, and I appreciate you listening again. Um, yeah, so I know you just said you won't put the, the speed humps um, on any of our castings, so obviously we don't uh, want that. And uh, we will, again, send you a map of the area just uh, just so you have it, of where our castings, will, you know, where our map shows our castings are. So thank you. Thank you. Um, before we get to the speed locations, Stephanie or, or Ryder, can you just show me where roughly the Fairmount line so station entrances, roughly, um, or yes, the Fairmount line is this yeah. wide. Yeah, it, um, off of Washington Street, it's so just off of this map. Yeah, got it. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Other questions on the speed humps before we go to the uh, to Vassar and uh, 
Carmen? Okay. Rob, you want to take us to Vassar and Carmen? Yeah. Um, so Vassar and, and Carmen, um, there are two uh, 40 foot um, wide layout uh, public streets. Um, Carmen is a one way, operates today as one way street southbound towards Vassar. Um, Vassar is a two way um, west of Schaefer um, and is one way um, east of, of Ripley and Carmen. Uh, we're proposing um, widening um, or extending the, the existing edge line along Carmen and Vassar, um, the west side of Carmen and on the uh, north side of Vassar by six feet, which is a typical curb extension. Um, this new area will, will become sidewalk um, and will um, formalize the, uh, the, um, the stop controlled condition that is currently in place for Vassar Street um, as a, a stop street at Carmen. Um, the uh, ex expansion or extension of the edge lines will also allow <clears throat> um, shortening of the crossings from Carmen Street um, to Vassar. Um, the opening, the proposed openings on both Carmen and Vassar is going to be 20 feet. Um, sorry, yep, there you go. Um, and um, the new layout would allow the installation of directional ramps across Vassar and also the uh, reconstruction of um, one ramp to, um, on Ripley Road and uh, Vassar Street as well. Any questions on this intersection? Um, yeah, I just had um, one comment. So at uh, Vassar, at uh, Shafter, um, you know, we just want to make sure that catch basin has a gutter mulch. If the gutter mulch broken, it needs to be replaced. Um, and then please verify the existing utilities there. Um, it looks like um, the it is shown that the drain tied into the sewer. Um, and if you need some information from us, uh, we can get that for you. We just want to make sure, um, you know, I know it says uh, existing catch basin. We just want to make sure that the uh, our stuff is um, drawn correctly. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We we can adjust that. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Pardon? Yes. This is more of a BDD thing. Uh, right now, today, if you are coming down Carmen Street and you want to go to the street that starts the S Shafter, Shafter Street. Yeah. Okay, the way how the existing geometry is such, someone can actually make a right turn on Carmen, go through that intersection and get to Shafter, okay? Without violating, without violating any rules of the road, people can be doing that. Now you want to make sure that movement doesn't, you're not supporting that movement because now you have to go the wrong way on Vassar. Okay, so make sure that you have, do not enter signs put on that uh, elongated workshop area. Okay? Uh, absolutely, yes. Yep. Can you point to the area? Right, exactly. So around that area, make sure that there is do not enter signs at the nose of that new pork chop which you've created. So okay. that way people clearly understand that they are violating the rules of the road. And if someone is misbehaving, they can be properly dealt with. Yes, absolutely. That That is part of um, the signing plan. Okay. Yeah, and, um... Raju, Stephanie, uh, it's actually, um, I know you circled one of the catch basins, you know, we got to check that for the, uh, um, the connection. Um, but it's also the other catch basin there. I know you're not showing any work there, but it, yeah, that one, it is shown tying right into the sewer. So um, that's, you know, we got to clarify that it's not. Well, yeah, we'll double back with um, the ASBIO plans and, and make sure we can adjust the uh, annotation on these plans. So okay, great. Uh, Radu, where the where exactly is the um, the pedestrian ramp on sort of the north or east side of Ripley Road? Um, it's it's sort of an apex ramp, yeah, there. and it was just rebuilt um, last year. Okay, both both of these ramps were rebuilt last year. Right. Um, do you want to take us to the raised crosswalk? Sure. 
Um, south of this location on Ripley Road, um, we're proposing um, installing a raised crosswalk. Um, this crosswalk aligns with the entrance to the, the Ripley playground. Um, uh, it's evenly um, spaced between the intersection of Vassar and, and Ripley and Ripley and Harvard Street. Um, uh, we have communicated with the adjacent abutters about uh, locating this um, race crosswalk, um, this location, and they're supportive of, of having this um, additional device um, or opportunity to, to cross the street. Um, the race crosswalk also works in conjunction with two additional speed humps that we're proposing on Ripley, um, to maintain that even um, 20 miles an hour or less operating speed uh, location. Uh, the the uh, playground and documented crossings of this location, uh, we found it was um, important for the safety of the uh, public to, to have it located at, at uh, Ripley at this location. Questions or comments on this race crosswalk? Questions or comments on, on the project overall? Right, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the, uh, those two locations are the only sort of non speed hump locations? Correct. Okay. Uh, right. Todd or Robbie? We're all set with this one. All right, members of the public? None. Sure. All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion on a petition by the Boston Transportation Department for the making of specific repairs in Norwell Street, Radcliffe Street, Elmont Street, Shafter Street, Carmen Street, Vassar Street, and Ripley Road as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Um, we are going to, before getting into new business, we need to close out the public hearing portion. Uh, there are agenda items 9 through 14 from Crown Castle. Uh, which we'll need to do first before getting on to the new business portion. Uh, is, uh, is there a representative from Crown Castle who's here to speak on uh, those items? Chris Murray, are you here? Chris, if you are on mute, you need to press star six. I believe he connected through a computer. Um, he is still muted, though, Chief. Um, OK. Let's see if we can give Chris a moment to, uh, uh, to unmute himself so that we can uh, do these items. And otherwise, we can uh, tell him, unless you tell me otherwise, we can uh, cover these at an at a upcoming hearing and move on to the new business portion. Chris, are you on? Looks like you might be unmuted now. He's shown as unmuted, but perhaps yep. his microphone isn't working. Bad fiber connection. <laughs> uh, uh, Chris, unless we hear from you, do, uh, Todd, would we need to either do we take an action on these to continue them, or uh, are they sort of continued by default? So, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, good. There we go. Perfect. Um, all right. So we will uh, move to public hearing item number nine, which is on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Roxbury. Uh, Albany Street, generally between address number 906 and Eustis Street, and Dearborn Street, generally at Eustis Street slash Albany Street slash Dearborn Street. This was new business on March 26, 2020, and this has shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, 906 Albany Street, Boston, Roxbury, Two Sheets, dated February 2020. Chris, the floor is yours. Chief, I saw this weird message coming across my screen saying, please, Mara, get to me. Please come back. Yeah, we may have lost him. 
Um, um, so, Chief, the reality is um, most, if not all, of uh, these next few items are uh, looking to be continued anyways. It would have been nice to get a little bit of testimony from uh, Chris. But I think in the interest of time, uh, why don't we go ahead and, uh, and consider just continuing number nine and then moving on to number 10 and so on and so forth. That sounds, uh, that sounds good. So uh, the current uh, agenda item is public hearing item number nine, which is for a petition by Crown Capital Fiber for work on Albany Street and Dearborn Street. Um, we can continue that to our next PIC meeting, which is four weeks from today, or four weeks from today, which is uh, May 21st. Todd, correct me if I'm wrong on that? Yes, May 21st. Thank you. Great. Um, all right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to continue. I'll make a motion to continue a grant of location on Albany Street and Dearborn Street on a petition by Crown Castle to May 21st. Second. All uh, Hi. Hi. It looks like Chris Murray is back. Chris, we. No, I'm trying to get back on. Can you hear me? Now we can. Hey, that's great. <laughs> uh, my understanding is that you would have wanted the. You were going to request a continuance anyway for. Uh, that's all these your motion on these uh, yeah, public hearings, oh. yes. That's correct. Great. All right, so moving on to public hearing item number 10 on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in South Boston, East 4th Street from address number 650 to I Street and I Street between East 4th Street and East 5th Street. This was new business on March 26, 2020. And this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan 650 East 4th Street, Boston, one sheet to January 21st, 2020. Yes, this is uh, Chris Murray with the uh, Giamari Group representing Crown Castle. And yes, uh, we want to continue that one as well. Great. All right, I'll entertain a motion to continue this item until our next PIC meeting, which is May 21st. We'll make a motion to continue a petition by Crown Castle for a grant of location in East 4th Street and I Street as read into the record by the chair to the May 21st hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Moving on to public hearing item number 11 on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install a new telecommunication conduit with City Shadow within Brookford Street, a public way in Dorchester from address number 35, generally at Drummy Street to, Har to Howard Avenue. This was new business uh, on March 26, 2020, and this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan. 35 Brookford Street, Dorchester, one sheet dated February 2020. Hi, Chris Murray with the Giamari Group again, representing Crown Castle, uh, looking to continue this to the next meeting. Great. All right. I'll entertain a motion to continue this item until May 21st. I'll make a motion to continue the petition by Crown Castle for a grant of location in Brookford Street. It's read into the record by the chair to the May 21st hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Next item is on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install a new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Brighton. Uh, Islington Street at the side of 40 Armington Street, south of Brighton Avenue and Brighton Avenue between Islington Street and Cambridge Street. This was new business on March 26, 2020. This is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, 40 Armington Street, Brighton Avenue, Alston, one sheet day, January 21st, 2020. Hi, Chris Murray with the Giamari Group representing Crown Castle. Looking to continue this one as well. Great. Any uh, questions or comments on this? All right, I'll entertain a motion to continue this item until May 21st. I'll make a motion to continue the petition by Crown Castle for a grant of location in Islington Street and Brighton Ave is read into the record by the chair to the May 21st hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to our next item on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install a new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in West Roxbury, locations of Carolina Avenue, the rear of 20 Child Street, east of South Street, South Street between Carolina Avenue and Cedric Street, 
Cedric Street, east of South Street. This was new business on March 26, 2020. This is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan, 20 Child Street, Boston, one sheet dated February 19, 2020. This is Chris Murray with the Jamari Group representing Crown Castle, and we're gonna continue this one as well. Thank you, Chris. Any questions or comments? All right, I'll entertain a motion to continue this item. So I'll make a motion to continue. I'll make a motion to continue a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of location in Carolina Ave, South Street, and Cedric Street is read into the record by the chair to the May 21st hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Um, moving on to our next item uh, on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install a new telecommunication conduit with City Shadow within Walnut Avenue, a public way in Roxbury, located generally at address number 302 between. Ruffin Street, uh, between address number 302 and Ruffin Street. This was new business on March 26, 2020. And this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan 302 Walnut Avenue, Boston, one sheet day, January 21st, 2020. Hi, this is Chris Murray with the Jim Murray Group uh, representing Crown Castle. And we're gonna continue this one as well. Thanks, Chris. Any questions or comments? All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion to continue a petition by Crown Castle for a grant of location in Walnut Ave is read into the record by the chair to the May 21st hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Um, that closes out the public hearing portion of the agenda. Moving on to new business. Our first item is 51 Geneva Ave, Dorchester, specific repairs on a petition by the City of Boston Transportation Department. Um, hi, I'm Stephanie Seskin with the Boston Transportation Department. Um, we are uh, here with a raised crosswalk to sign um, across Geneva Ave. Um, this location serves several important places in the community, uh, most notably the Grove Hall Senior Center, but also the Grove Hall Burnett of the Boston Public Library um, and the Jeremiah Burke High School. Um, we have been working closely with uh, BCYF um, and their um, older and bolder group um, who drew particular attention to the issues that they experience at this specific location, um, most notably failure to yield um, to people in the crosswalk, um, drivers who are perhaps um, speeding on Geneva Ave, um, and also the concern that the older population um, crosses the street at a slower pace than some of the younger folks who may be crossing the street here. Um, we did begin with a more interim solution uh, for this location um, and have taken um, feedback from the community as well as done our own engineering observations um, to develop this plan. I'm joined by Radu Nan from Kittleson and Associates who can um, walk through um, what exactly we're proposing here. Thanks, Stephanie. Hi. Um, I'm Radu uh, with Kittleson Associates um, for the Race Crosswalk on Geneva Avenue. Um, we are proposing to extend the existing um, sidewalk on the south side uh, of Geneva, which is 34 feet wide. Um, the extension of the sidewalk will be six feet wide, which is a typical curb extension uh, for the city of Boston. Um, the um, extension of the cross, uh, the, the sidewalk on the south side of um, the street will make uh, pedestrians waiting to cross more visible to the approaching um, vehicles um, going southbound on Geneva Avenue. Um, the extension also allows the um, remodeling of existing um, electrical manholes, which are uh, located today very close to the edge line uh, at this location. Um, on the south side of Geneva Avenue, uh, there is a large concrete plaza. We're proposing to reconstruct um, approximately 7.6 feet of that existing sidewalk, um, essentially one panel uh, within um, one or two panels within the um, um, uh, from from the existing edge line. Um, so that's why we have this um, rather odd dimension for that reconstruction. On the north side of Geneva, we're uh, proposing to reconstruct the existing uh, pedestrian ramp. 
um, so we can level it um, uh, for the rate, the construction of the race crosswalk. Um, the uh, street drainage is from south to north um, in order to maintain uh, positive drainage. We're uh, proposing to install two new catch basins uh, on either side of Geneva um, at the southern bottom of the race crosswalk. Stephanie, quickly, sorry, Keith. Uh, uh -huh. The primary reason for uh, enhancing the safety at this crosswalk, current crosswalk. So I'm gonna, there's a there's a crosswalk there today, yes? Correct. Awesome. And it is the, the primary use is, is there a, I forgot who the two abutters were. Like, who is on um, the other side of that crosswalk? Uh, the other side of the crosswalk is an auto body shop um, and then a vacant parcel owned by the city of Boston that yes. may become a park in the future, but is used as a parking lot today. Okay. So today, currently, this is a mid block crosswalk that is got a uh, uh, community center or an uh, old day. I mean, there's, there's nothing special about the, the, or is there something special about the immediate vicinity that is, uh, Regardless. Yeah, this is the um, actual oh, directly to the community center, okay. Uh, okay. right in front. So lots of vulnerable people that are crossing over here, people are going way too fast. Uh, what's the curb restrictions, curb, curb sidewalk control? Is it uh, no parking, uh, parking, what the heck? Uh, it's a bit of a mixture um, because of the Burke School. Um, so I'm going to call that east, um, which is below the raised crosswalk that we're looking at um, right there. There are parking restrictions um, to accommodate school bus, um, pick up drop off um, for most of the day um, to the west of the crosswalk. Um, it's a, been a bit contentious. There is a hydrant, um, but because this is a senior center, um, the ride um, often pick um, does pick up drop off. Um, there's also an existing um, accessible parking space that has been identified there. Um, what we are proposing is um, modifying uh, some of those curb regulations to the west of the crosswalk um, to better provide space for the ride to uh, pull up closer to the door um, and move the accessible space to the other side um, of the hydrant. I'm sorry, Stephanie, I was very I didn't know. Uh, I didn't tell you why. I'm just trying to see whether you can even narrow this, narrow this even further, because 28 feet resulting is still this two-way traffic, okay? And I'm going to assume it is just one lane in each direction on Bar today, roughly. I have no idea because the lane markings don't show up over here. So okay. trying to uh, see it is out two way. Way. Sorry. Uh, there is a double yellow center line. Um, Okay, so there's a double lane. Do we have two lanes in each direction today or just one lane? Uh, just one in each direction today. Just one in each direction. Uh, what are your thoughts about uh, widening the sidewalks from both sides so you have a 20 foot opening to go through? Right now you have a 28 foot opening with the race. race yeah, the, right. the one challenge, uh, if I could. Um, try to provide some context is the um, the adjacent driveways. There are driveway openings right now on either side of the, the proposed crosswalk um, or the existing crosswalk, the race crosswalk uh, to the north. Um, so we have one large existing driveway just south of the crosswalk and then another driveway um, just north of the race crosswalk. Um, and, and those continue. Um, the um, extending the, uh, the, the, the widening the sidewalk would require coordination with the adjacent property owner and um, adjusting the opening of the existing driveway. Um, That's a huge opening. Rado, let's do this offline to try yes. and support the primary function over here. I'm going to assume you have a target speed which you want to get to, but at 28 feet, bi-directional traffic, you're not going to it will be a challenge for you to still slow traffic down. So if you're going to make some, if you're going to make changes, uh, let's be bold. But can we discuss that offline and see what can be done in the interest of this long agenda which we have today? 
Sure, yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for raising that, Paro. Other questions or comments on this? Todd or Abby? We're all set on this for now. Okay. Members of the public? We see none. Okay, all right. Uh, we will work with you guys. We'll see you back here in four weeks. Terrific. I uh, have the intervening conversation with Para about uh, the north side uh, uh, design. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Moving on to our next item of new business. Uh, 560-574 Commonwealth Avenue, Beacon Street, Boston proper, widening relocation and extension, specific repairs on a set of petitions by Mark Kenmore, LLC. All right, can you see me? Good afternoon, Damien Chaviano with Mark Development. Uh, as was echoed by other uh, folks earlier, thank you, uh, Commission, for moving forward in these challenging times with these hearings. It's, it's greatly appreciated. Um, today you'll be hearing uh, from our team, included in that team uh, is our counsel, Jay Eigerman and Steve Moderano from Bowler Engineering. Uh, our project here, as it sits in front of you, uh, is a hotel envisioned for Kenmore Square on 560 Commonwealth Avenue. Uh, this is a project uh, that has had the benefit of a lot of hands. Uh, we filed this project in May of 2017, and when we originally filed it, it was a lot less dramatic in scale. Uh, as to what you're going to see today. Uh, as we were going through the process, we were pushed uh, by the city and members of the, of the community to really think bigger about what might be possible for a public realm offering. Uh, and we think we were able to achieve that with our project, uh, so much so that in December of 2019, uh, the BPDA board uh, voted this project uh, through the Article 80 process um, and allowed for uh, the opportunity to receive a PDA approval, which we did uh, in, in February. So um, <clears throat> we've spent a lot of time working on this project. As, as you can see here, this is our first, uh, first attempt to walk you through uh, the project. However, it will certainly not be our last. Uh, as Jay Eigerman is going to walk you through, there are going to be multiple steps in this process uh, that have been worked through with the city. Uh, today's intent is really to create the framework uh, for the roadway component of this project, uh, but we anticipate uh, numerous conversations uh, with the commission as we walk through the process. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Jay Eigerman to walk you through where things uh, will move forward from this point. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? We can. Okay. Yes. Jay Eigerman, uh, Ruben Junius, and Rose. Uh, so this is the first of a series of petitions that will be spread out most likely over uh, years. Um, uh, today is really just to, as, as Steve Moderano and others will explain, set the curb lines hypothetically for the overall project uh, so that we can design uh, properly and begin okay. construction of a necessary extension of Commonwealth Avenue uh, that uh, we're not obliged to go forward with it, but we have to get a, a approval that that uh, extension meets your standards. Uh, say we were to go forward with the project and we were to build that extension, which is all pretty much on private property right now, our own property, we of course would come back to all the city agencies, including the PIC, in order to accept it. Uh, there's no obligation that the PIC accepted into the city system. Uh, that's at our, our risk. And I want to make clear before we get to the last round, uh, which is the reconfiguration in order to uh, build the plaza and build the hotel that you saw on the rendering in the first slide, uh, none of that even uh, can be done, not even submitted to the PIC, unless, as I say, the Commonwealth Avenue extension is accepted. So again, to take you back, the only items on the agenda today are the first two, a specific repairs plan to set those hypothetical curb lines so that we have a proper design context, and then the WRE, the widening, uh, in order to build uh, the necessary road on private property that could be accepted later. I think that, that it, that's the basic outline. With that, I think I want to turn over to the engineers. Thank you. Okay. 
Great. So, uh, Steve Moderano with Bowler. Uh, just wanted to step back and, and Jay, what Jay said is is exactly what we're trying to do here. And I apologize for my hand. It's hard for me with my Italian uh, presentation style to sit still and talk to a screen. But uh, so, excuse my hands. But um, what we wanted to do is just talk a little bit about how we're approaching this, which maybe not the the typical process for the Public Improvement Commission, but it's a relatively typical way to approach development and it may be more common when you're looking at uh, waterfront development or near wetlands where you, you really wanna set that edge. So you kind of define the boundary limits, uh, get those limits approved, and then you come back with future filings with the details of what happens, respecting those you know, typically resource areas. In this case, our resource area is really the public realm uh, and, and the roadways. So uh, that that's kind of the way we're approaching this first is, round is, is, to, is really to set these edges, right? We're setting the edges of the public realm, we're setting the edges of the right of way modification sets of sums come and back that. with future detail um, in, in subsequent phases. So that's, that's kind of the approach that we're looking at and we, we call it setting the edge and I, I think that's a relevant thing of what, what we're trying to accomplish with these first uh, petitions. So uh, I just want to take a second to walk, walk through public improvement commission petitions that we see coming forward over the course of the project. Uh, so just walking through just to give some context here we have the yellow is the existing uh, Commonwealth Ave right away. The green is existing Beacon Street. This is the existing Citizens Bank building and parcel. Uh, so the first action that we have in front of you now is really to establish this, which is the blue is the widening to Commonwealth Avenue. And obviously that is to accommodate this future roadway connection. And then these are really the curb lines that are shown on the, on the actual uh, approval plan that we have and we'll get back to that in a minute. So this is really a summary of the first action and shows how that ties in with the existing rights of ways. Uh, and then in the future we come back and you'll start to see detail it. added and there will be a discontinuance of this portion of Commonwealth Avenue to start shaping out that future de development parcel. You have a similar discontinuance on Beacon Street that we'll be back for uh, and then this is really the end result of what we're trying to get to is this becomes right away. This in turn becomes uh, the development pad is this white box and you'll have the full rights of ways uh, really around that where part of it is public plaza here and then you can see the roadway configuration starting to come together in, in this uh, drawing. So. That, that's sort of the summary of the steps. And, and again, we're just here for step one, which is this plan here is the good summary of here is that first right of way. And we've got a zoomed in plan uh, that I'll show next, but I thought this was good to get the overall context. And then the light blue shows existing curb lines today. And then you can see the existing building here that, that will go away as part of this project. And then you've got the dark blue starts, you can see the proposed roadway configuration and curb lines. Um, and with this plan comes the commitments, right? So it's almost, if, if we're thinking back to resource area delineations, we're, we're establishing the limits, but we're also establishing some performance standards of how the design evolves from this point. So. Uh, there's just some general notes down here with commitments to eight to 10 foot wide clear pedestrian zones, uh, five foot minimum bike lanes, and those details need to evolve as the design evolves, but the commitments are there that really set those performance standards of what those designs need to accomplish. And, um, and then just zooming in to the next slide, this is really zoomed in for the right of way uh, expansion for Commonwealth Avenue and then again the, the context of the curbs and how they fit within that box that new right away box so um, and then ultimately this again by the slide early but this is now that we've given some context this is this is what we're trying to get to um, there's obviously a lot of steps there and we're just here for step one which is that right away expansion 
and setting of the curb line so then we can start developing all the detail you see in this this plan that has the bicycle accommodations significantly better pedestrian accommodations the traffic pattern that's been uh, worked through as part of the article 80 process and continues to evolve and even this version is is evolved from when uh, the BPDA uh, board approval came. So there's been some additional improvements which created additional public realm for better bicycle and uh, pedestrian accommodations as, as some qualifications in this quarter here. So we think the curb line has evolved to a point uh, where it, it, that it puts us in. to the next uh, phase of design once we get that approval so we can start uh, the real detail of how the, how the building interacts with the public realm and what those specific public realm improvements will include. Um, so that that's the information we have and it's it's really that first action but uh, open to question uh, on any piece of the project. Uh, Steve and Damien Jay, uh, Jay, that was really helpful. Uh, to back up one slide, uh, and it was helpful to see that, that full list of uh, potential PIC actions and which ones we're focusing on today. Uh, the, the specific repairs would be only for ComAv extension. Is that right? That, like, the, the, the item that you have on new business today is limited to that, or is it? It also includes the Beacon Street uh, lines. Oh, okay. Right. Yep. So the widening relocation specific to ComEv extension, essentially, and the yep. Okay. Right. So this this box becomes part of Commonwealth Avenue. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Got it. Uh, and I, I realize that uh, you're still in conversation with. Uh, with the city's transportation department and sort of refining it, but can you just talk a little bit through where you are in the process of evaluating the transportation impacts of this? Sure, Damien, do you wanna give an update there? Yeah, I'm happy to jump in. And I actually, I don't know if Stan Tech's on as well. Um, you know, we're in, in, I'd say, regular communication with BTD. Uh, we've submitted VISA models and I think right now the dialogue uh, is a back and forth regarding some of the phasing and signalization. We've been asked uh, to make some recent updates to our most recent submittal. Uh, my understanding is I think that we're getting close to a uh, phasing signal uh, prioritization that works from a BTD perspective. Uh, the last piece of this is we're continuing to evaluate discussions vis-a-vis uh, -vis public buses. Uh, specifically the 57 bus. Uh, the MBTA has been involved in that dialogue as well. And I think that is probably the last piece of this is to make sure, you know, we're all comfortable, specifically the BTD and then subsequently MBTA as to how bus operations will work through the square. Uh, but we're, I think, getting close to a point where we'll be back in front of the MBTA uh, with a proposal that will, we hope, be blessed by the BTD. Um, and so I expect that to happen within the next week or so. All right. Other questions or comments by members of the team or members of the commission? All right. Todd or Avi? Uh, one thing that I'll mention uh, at the beginning of this presentation, uh, it was noted that the developer may not be obligated to construct this new section of Commonwealth Avenue. Uh, it should be noted that should they not end up constructing that section of roadway, the city does reserve the right to require them to come back to discontinue all or a portion of that new right of way that is being laid out. And we would need to move from the project team to cooperate with that. Todd, EJ. Todd, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay. Someone's mic is making a lot of noise. Okay. Hopefully it's not me. Okay. So the right now I think uh, I am seeing a widening relocation extension that is for the reconfiguration of that sort of like a slip ramp uh, 
if someone can point whoever has control of the mouse uh, that area okay so that that's part one and part two is a series of specific repairs can the person who is controlling the mouse from the petitioner's side show exactly what is the limit of the specific repairs that you are, are envisioning for the commission to take action at the next hearing sure i'm just going to click so this plan showing the blue lines be useful from the previous one because it has a better context okay sure yep so it's really that's the current layout to be imposed so this is the current layout this is the proposal is to relocate these curves here yeah these curves around here up to the intersection there's some work on the nose here and then this new plaza is created so this curve line here around the edge and then starting here around this corner and back to here yeah steven the thing which is tricking me or confusing me is that large plaza area which you are showing okay that specific no, the, just the, the big plaza okay mm -hmm. part of the plaza you are going to do a building and then the other part is supposed to be public space before we before one can uh, discuss specific repairs of it, should we figure out who owns that thing, i.e. it be discontinued? And that is a procedural step for uh, online. Uh, it, Stephen, can I take that one? Sure. Yeah, I, I, I think there's a bit of confusion. If we go back to the previous uh, couple of slides where you show the outline. Yes, right there. So actually, and this is what some the lawyers, Chong, Liu, and I struggled with, we're actually not going to go forward to do any physical work outside of that uh, uh, the new Commonwealth Avenue extension. There's this is a hypothetical curb line that would be approved so that we can design. We needed the context, as Stephen put it, to set the edge, so that uh, city staff and the team could understand where the proposed extension would go, uh, but. Today, you're not being, and, and at the next hearing, you're not being asked to approve any actual work in uh, the whole rest of what you're seeing here, the huge, the huge plaza. Also, we did uh, work uh, together over the last six months to figure out the timing of when do we do the discontinuance, uh, when do we get the specific repairs, uh, when also does the BPDA get involved uh, to do the, the grant deeds. And the, it was very clear from PIC staff that they absolutely cannot uh, bring to you at the PIC a discontinuance of any public way until they knew that the replacement road, essentially, of the Commonwealth Avenue extension, which is going to be at that red area, that red polygon, is built and fully accepted by the city. Only then would they even countenance a petition to discontinue anything for where we're going to build the hotel. So again, if and now if we could go back to I think the third slide where I had the summary of petitions. Um, yes. So again, I uh, I would I would look at that second paragraph. So that's at our risk. So say we go forward and we tear down our own Citibank building and say uh, we, we build this Commonwealth Avenue extension. It's essentially a private driveway up to city standards, but we're taking the risk that we come back to PIC and it's not accepted. Um, and if it's not accepted, essentially the project ends. It's that we, we never change any of the public uh, use of Kenmore Square. We just, we've obliterated our own building and built a driveway across it, but that's the end of the project. Uh, so the idea is that we would only do discontinuances in the last phase once PIC knows that we have correctly and appropriately built this road, uh, Commonwealth Avenue Extension. Uh, Mr. Eigerman, hopefully I just pronounced the name correctly. Yes, thank you. Okay, so uh, I've served the PIC Commission for a quarter century and uh, every once in a while we have uh, unconventional situations, but I'm struggling to find out a scenario where there's a hypothetical situation, because you keep, you keep saying that thing a couple of times, a hypothetical 
scenario or a layout of those specific repairs and I'm struggling to understand and I'll try and get guidance from our legal counsel about that step. I'm just trying to understand how both parties, we both see the, the action you are seeking from the commission about the specific repairs and you use the word, it's a hypothetical scenario. Which part was I misunderstanding when you use the word hypothetical scenario? Uh, I, I, what I'm getting at is the curb lines for the future plaza, the curb lines for the future plaza. So in, in order for the, this is, I'm not an engineer, but as I understand it, the discussions between the engineers, both for the city side and the team, is that they, they needed to know what are, hypothetically, if the plaza were built, if the plaza were built in this dramatic uh, reconfiguration of Kenmore Square, which is the set of applications four through eight, if that were to happen years from now, how would Commonwealth Avenue extension relate to it? That's my understanding. Um, so the only thing that actually would be authorized for work is for the applicant, the petitioner, to do uh, to to build out Commonwealth Avenue hypothetical possible Commonwealth Avenue extension, but it may very well be that the city decides never to accept that extension. Steve, did I get that right? Yeah, yeah. So the it's it's really setting the lines so we're sure that red box is in the right place and matches where that those you know physical roadway improvements will be in the future so really it's, it's setting the context to make sure this is in the right spot and the plan works with these curb line configurations and, and what happens if this gets built you need to make sure before we move forward with a building here that there's the plan in place and committed to locked in effectively with this this plan that if you discontinue pieces in the middle here how do we keep Kenmore Square whole if you never built the building but if you took this land how, how do you how do you make sure Kenmore Square operates once this leg is accepted so it's unusual and there's a lot of steps and this was a way to get the first set of rules for you know performance locked in uh to future curb lines and to be in a position to move forward with this right away modification so there, there's a lot more steps coming before construction starts but this is really the first step to lock in the design requirements and and rules going forward Other questions by members of the commission? Todd or Um, I'm all set for now. Yeah. I believe we have some members of the public who have uh, interest in providing testimony. Uh, if there are multiple members uh, who are looking to provide, you can just put your name in the chat, which you can access by sort of clicking on the looks like the comment bubble in the upper right hand corner of your screen or most likely it's in the upper right hand corner of your screen just put your name in there i can then i'll just i will sort of uh call you up to present if that if that's convenient <clears throat> are the members of the public who would like to present or provide comment Ah, uh, Dolores, you're going to unmute yourself and, and uh, please uh, join us with your comments. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? We can, perfectly. Wonderful. Um, well, again, thank you for giving the opportunity to speak today. Um, I, my name is Dolores Bogdanian. I live on Park Drive in Boston, and I'm currently serving as president of the Audubon Circle Neighborhood Association and represent members of the community who would say about this project, think smaller. Um, I am here today simply to ask that members of this commission do two things. 
one, to please take an independent look at the proponent's plan and do not assume that everyone before you has done the work to understand the full implications of the changes that are presented to you today. As you know, Kenmore Square is a critical intersection of three major thoroughfares into and out of the city. So there is no room for mistake in making significant changes to this road system. I attended both the BPDA board hearing on this matter as well as the Zoning Commission's hearing. And as I wrote in ACNA's submission to you, in both cases, the members indicated that their decisions were based on the assumption that those who had worked on this project had done their homework and that the proposal passed muster. I ask that you not make that same assumption. I believe that the traffic analysis that was done for this project is flawed, both because it was very limited in scope, taking barely anything outside of the square into consideration, and because it is based on false assumptions. One of which is that the hotel patrons who fly into Boston or who take the train, which the proponent presumes will be, or asserts will be the greater majority, will take the T to Kenmore. And I happen to think that this is just foolish. And I'm, I admit, readily admit I am not a traffic engineer, but if the analyses into the traffic volume and LOS at intersections and everything else that dictates the success of a road system are based on inadequate info, then the conclusions must be suspect. The second thing I would ask is that you use your common sense. As I said, these are major thoroughfares into and out of the city. Any suggestion that portions of them are surplus, which is language used by proponent, to the needed capacity for travel is false. Where the city has narrowed major roadways elsewhere in the city has, from my experience, proven its, its poor results. Beacon Street and Audubon Circle was narrowed by widening the sidewalks and then adding bike lanes. I love the introduction of bike lanes on our city streets. But narrowing the roads while trying to accommodate this additional lane for bike travel, in my opinion, doesn't make any sense. Um, trying to make the roads in Boston more difficult to navigate is, in my opinion, not a way to make our streets either safer or more pleasant. I can tell you as a pedestrian that walking along congested streets with the noise and stink and tension associated with them is incredibly unpleasant. The increased use of horns in our neighborhood is a loud and incessant reminder that the road is not safer. Please take a look at this proposal. Please use your common sense and please demand that the proponent and others in the city administration take reality into account before rushing to let the false assumptions and I think suspect public benefits presented in this project lead us to something to regret at leisure. I'd like to add my thanks um, to you for continuing your work during these very stressful times and again, for the opportunity to speak. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Dolores, uh, one thing which I think we might be able to follow up on right now, and if not, certainly between now and any public hearing, uh, is around the set of assumptions that are going into the model. And I think, and Dolores, I may be thinking of, the, of a letter, it's either a letter that you wrote or, or maybe another person from the Audubon Circle area wrote, with some specific questions around assumptions about whether they were included in the traffic model. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I think we I just want to make sure that those issues that you've raised, both about the inputs to the model and the, and the scope of the model, that we um, that we get you some spe specific answers to, to that and were they actually included and how are they considered and all those pieces. Um, I don't know whether the project proponents have seen those letters. Uh, if not, we can get them to them. Uh, and if they have already seen them, perhaps somebody from Stantec can comment on uh, the modeling that's been done and whether they've taken into account some of the things that Dolores has raised. Uh, hi, this is Jason Schreiber with uh, Stantec. Um, no, I, we have not seen those letters um, as suggested. Uh, yeah, the modeling that we did was uh, rather comprehensive that's taken into account BTD expectations for Road shares in this area and intersections analyzed, but we'd be happy to hear from these letters. Great. Jason, oh, sorry, go ahead. And, and Chief Osgood, I would just add uh, to the concerns uh, raised and, and second what Jason said, we'd be happy to look and provide any further color. Uh, but I do think it's worth pointing out for the benefit of the public, uh, really at your suggestion through this process, uh, we were asked to bring on 
two peer reviewers. So not only was Stantec part of the formula as well as BTD, but there were two outside parties that the city brought on at your suggestion that were also reviewing our information and submittal. So just to help try to provide a little more context to the process, but we're happy to provide any further detail that we can to try to alleviate concerns. So thank you. I appreciate that, Damien and Jason. Todd, if we can, can we get Dolores' letter and if there were one or two, the letters we've received and get them to Damien and Jason, just so that we can be able to get back to you, Dolores, and the Outer Bound Circle Neighborhood Association about the sort of inputs that have gotten into place, what the models are actually saying. To Damien's point, the peer reviews that have been done and be able to have a conversation about them. Todd, is it possible to get those letters over? Certainly. Well, I believe we've received three letters so far, so we'll pass all of those on to the project team. Great. And if I might just add, all of the letters submitted by the Neighborhood Association are a matter of public record. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Other, I should check the chat, are there other members of the public who would like to offer comments at this point? I'm not seeing anyone in the, let's put their name in the chat. A next step, I think, for us, and we have four weeks between any public hearing, is to be able to share those three letters and any other letters that we get in, Damien, with you, with your team, and be able to make sure that assumptions or interests that were raised are ones that have been considered and that we are able to loop back to you, Dolores, about what the modeling says, the assumptions that went into it, and what the results of the peer review studies have been. Hello, can you hear me? My name is Catherine. Yep, go ahead, Catherine. Yep, we can hear you. Great, I have been waiting to speak. I wanted to, first of all, I wanted to reiterate and support everything that Dolores has told you, and to add another point that she made in one of her letters and that I made in one of my letters, which is that in addition to not including intersections immediately inside Kenmore Square, such as the intersection that will have a brand new light at the corner of Beacon Street and Montfort Street, and other intersections further up Beacon and further up Commonwealth Avenue and further up Brookline Avenue, there's another piece that was not included in the initial determination and study, and that was that 5,000 cars are expected to come and go every day from the new Fenway Center to be built over the Mass Turnpike. And 5,000 cars is a huge addition to the traffic every day coming into and out of Kenmore Square, and to not have included that we think is a major oversight. Also, right now, if you look at Kenmore Square from the air the way it is now, Commonwealth Avenue and Beacon Street cross in an X in Kenmore Square, and Brookline Avenue in from the side. And anything that impacts the center of that X is going to have a huge impact not only on drivers, but also on pedestrians and bicyclists. Right now, it's quite easy to go through Kenmore Square, either eastbound or westbound, either from Commonwealth Avenue or from Beacon Street, unless there is a Red Sox game or a concert, because the streets are straight. They're in an X. What the developer is proposing is to turn that X into a spaghetti of streets. And we just think it's absurd to think that a spaghetti of streets 
and adding two stoplights where there are not two stoplights now is going to improve traffic flow into the square. We also believe that the project is going to hurt uh, residents of the area as well as businesses and visitors to the area, not only in terms of being stuck in traffic, but making it more difficult to cross the street because there'll be so much traffic backed up and uh, more uh, dangerous for bicyclists. And I would really like you to picture yourself driving, walking through Kenmore Square as it is proposed by the developer um, with these two extra completely unnecessary stoplights versus what it is like today. Uh, we, we are not opposed to development. On the contrary, living in the Fenway Audubon Circle area, obviously we've have uh, seen tremendous changes and very positive developments over the last 10 years. That's not the issue. The issue is uh, traffic safety and the smoothness of traffic flow as well as pedestrian safety. So those are, uh, those are my comments. Um, I have also submitted letters and I would very much like to have Stantec and any other consultants uh, that the developer uh, uh, contacted on this project to see my and Dolores's letters and the letters of any other members of the public. Uh, Catherine, I appreciate those comments and thank you for your, uh, your, your patience to be able to provide testimony. We'll certainly get all the letters, including yours, um, to Stantec and to the project team at large. Um, there has been a, a lot of analysis, which uh, I can't speak to, and I think it's still under review about things like traffic flow, uh, safety benefits, et cetera, of some of these uh, uh, of these elements. But certainly, to your point, that'll uh, those will be uh, major parts of our consideration. I also can't speak to the Fenway Center as a as an input in the model, um, but whether I don't know, if somebody from the project team can speak to that now. If not, um, we can ensure that they get back to you on that. Uh, yes, briefly, uh, Fenway Center, as well as uh, several other area developments were included. The Landmark Center, Children's Hospital expansion um, and among them, as well as the BU Data Sciences Center. Okay. Thank you, Jason. All right, other uh, comments from the public? Other questions from or comments from uh, commission or the commission staff? All right, uh, uh, between now and uh, the public hearing, uh, we can work on, uh, again, getting the comment letters uh, to the project proponent uh, may, and sort of reviewing some of the assumptions, the issues that were raised specifically by the Audubon Circle Neighborhood Association uh, and residents in the area. Uh, and find the right way to be able to uh, uh, connect between ACMA and uh, and the project proponent. Um, with that in mind, does, does, does May 21st work for uh, the project team four weeks from now? Yes, it does. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, thank you. All right. Our next item is 350 Hyde Park Avenue, Wyvern Street, West Roxbury, a grant of location on a petition by TC Systems. Good afternoon. My name is Adam Heller uh, with the CNA Engineering Group representing TC Systems. Um, can everyone see the screen that I'm sharing? Yes. Great. Uh, so TC Systems is petitioning for lead company status on the installation of approximately 330 feet of PVC problem along uh, Wyvern Street and Hyde Park Avenue. This project will have no participants and has been entered into co box. Um, it's meant to service customers in the area. Adam, um, sorry. You lost your screen. At least I lost your screen. Did others? Uh, there we go. Got it? Yep, it's back. Okay. Um, so this is uh, a petition for two more GC conduits um, starting at an existing utility pole on Wyvern Street um, heading into Hyde Park Avenue. Um, it does not cross the median. Um, the crossing of Hyde Park is at an area where there's a, um, an, an existing discontinuity in that median. 
um, but then turns and continues down High Park Avenue to the point where it reaches an existing accident handhold, uh, which we do have written approval to enter. Um, this would also include the installation of one um, quad duct city show. Great. Any questions or comments on this from uh, the PIC uh, commissioners? Todd or Avi? I'll put on this one. We received the letter from Extinet allowing them to be in that handhold. I'm sorry, Todd, can you say that again? I said we're all set. We received the letter from Extinet allowing TC systems to be in that handhold. In the handhold. Great. Okay. Members of the public? Okay. Adam, we'll uh, uh, see you in four weeks on May 21st. It works for you. Yep. Thank you very much. Great. Our next item is 396 Northampton Street, Camden Street, Boston Proper, a granted location on petition by Crown Castle Fiber. Hi, Chris Murray with the GMRE Group, representing Crown Castle. We're from granted location on Fenway, the Hemingway Street, and Public Alley 807. Uh, most of the work is going to be done by Microtrench. And we'll be installing uh, one handhold along the way. Um, Up, there's two <laughs> handholds. There's one on Hemingway Terrace and there's one on Hemingway Street. If this is a city project, our preference is for traditional trenching. I believe it's going to feed Connors Hall, but I'm unsure if that's for uh, City of Boston uh, customer or not. I think I just thought I saw in the plan City of Boston. Okay, then it is. I was unclear on that one. I know the next one is. I am perhaps looking at the wrong thing, but did you say on Hemingway? Chris? Hemingway Terrace. There's a uh, small piece on Hemingway Street, oh, which is a uh, traditional trench coming oh. out of the, uh, the electric manhole. Oh, Got it. That was, sorry. Uh, that action that you're referring to, Chris, um, we did a little bit of digging and found out that those streets are actually private ways um, and thus not <laughs> under the jurisdiction of the PIC. So that was removed from the agenda. Um, sorry, you didn't see my message on that. Uh, we're currently discussing 396 North Northampton Street, Camden Street. Oh, okay. So, yeah, go, go, go for it, Chris. All right, this one here, we've got um, about 500 feet total of uh, micro trench, and that's going to be feeding a uh, customer, which I believe is the city of Boston on Camden Street. Uh, we have one handhole at the intersection of Columbus Ave and Camden Street which we've relocated out of the uh, sidewalk area or the crosswalk area. Uh, thank you for moving that out of the crosswalk area. Um, presumably we can't move it out of the roadway, right? That's correct. All right. All right. Members of the commission have questions or comments on this proposal? Traditional trenching. We, yeah, we're looking into uh, that. I believe uh, Crown is meeting with the city of Boston to discuss that. Okay. Todd, Robbie? Um, I'd be curious to know if you feel, Chris, that you can uh, make a decision on traditional trench versus micro trench in four weeks. Um, if not, we can maybe think about extending longer. Yeah, if, if not, we will continue as we did with the uh, the earlier items. That was by saying two weeks, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Other questions or comments? All right. Now, Chris, we'll see you on this one in four weeks on May 21st. All right. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, our next item is 227 D Street, West Broadway, South Boston, granted location on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber. 
Yeah, this is Chris Murray with the Jim Murray Group, representing Crown Castle Fiber. To install conduits along D Street from West Fifth Street to West Broadway. West Broad Broadway. Uh, we're connecting into existing Crown Castle hand holes at either end. And as you can see on the print, uh, there is a, a note there for a future three by three Crown Castle handhold yep. uh, just outside of Gold Street. And it was brought to my attention that that handhold and conduit to 200 D Street has already been constructed. So these will tie into that handhold from both Great. sides. All right. Questions or comments on this? Todd or Abby? We're all set on this one. Okay. Members of the public? None. All right. Chris, we'll see you in four weeks on this one. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, right. Stay safe. Sure. Uh, number, uh, item number six in new business is uh, 360, uh, sorry, 380 Shaman Avenue, West Adams Street, Washington Street, Boston Proper, a granted location on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber. Um, hello, this is Kelly Cullen with Access Engineering representing Crown Castle. And um, this actually was a combination of two projects. One was a um, to feed the small cell node, and then the other one was to the school, Blackstone Elementary. And uh, yes, thank you very much, Todd, for helping me with the, uh, the presentation. I'll have to figure out what's going on with my computer on these calls. Anyway, um, this is about, um, it's 373 feet for, of micro trench, and then the rest is uh, two four inch, one for city shadow. Um, there are a couple handholds in this project. And um, yeah, so let me know if you have any questions on this. Um, Shelly, can you look to see if uh, between now and the public hearing, whether the proposed handholds can be, maybe given their size, they can be, but whether they can be moved into, made smaller and moved into the furnishing zone along West Adam, uh, rather than uh, in the travel uh, lane of West Adam? Uh, yes, I can do that. It looks like the one right across the street from the school. Yep. Um, there's a street sidewalk there. I'll, I'll look at both of those and see if they can move them into the sidewalk. Great. Thank you, Shelly. No problem. Other questions or comments? Todd or Abby? All set. Members of the public? I see none. OK. Um, Shelly, we'll see you in four weeks on this one, May 21st. That worked for you? Excellent. Yes, Perfect. thank you. Our next item of new business is 54 Old Colony Avenue, C Street, Baxter Street, South Boston, and granted location on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber. Yes, again, Shelly Cullen, Access Engineering uh, for Crown Castle. Uh, this is a project the same as the next one. They're, they're feed buildings. That's AT&T. It was a lead company with no participants. Um, so this is 820 feet of micro trench. And then there's, there are three hand holes. Um, my, my guess is that the, this one on Dorchester Ave at, at that, the first one in that intersection yep. would be very difficult to move. Yep. Um, and then it just, just given where the trench is, uh, it might be difficult, possibly the one on Baxter to get that out of that intersection, but I don't know how much that would help. If you can just explore that between now and the public hearing, that'd be great. I'm sorry, uh, it again? Shelly, if you can just explore uh, whether the other two can be moved, uh, the one on, on Baxter and the one at C and Old Colony. Yeah. If you can just take a look at that, okay. that'd be great. I'll, I'll do that. Right. Other questions or comments on this? 
Todd or Rodney? We're all set on this one. Members of the public? None. All right. Um, I will, uh, Shelly, we'll see you in four weeks on this one. Excellent. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, moving on to our eighth item of new business, 14 Temple Street, Doran Street, Mystic Avenue in Charlestown, a grant of location on petition by Crown Castle Fiber. Great. Um, again, Shelly Cullen, Access Engineering for Crown Castle. And uh, this one is also Micro Trench, about 620 feet. And um, two three by three hand holes. And again, this one on. Um, Mafia Way does not look like that would um, make it in the sidewalk, but the one on, on Durant's probably could. I check that one out. That, that's going over to a pole, so I'll have to see what, what the condition of that sidewalk is. It looks like it's an asphalt sidewalk, so it may not be. You know, it could also go in the in the sidewalk where the trench is running. So, so I'll check that out before the next meeting as well. That would be great. Do we normally? I mean, uh, there's more of a question, I guess, for you as well as for, for Todd and the rest of the PIC team. Do we often run it? Would we often run something like this beneath the sidewalk unless we were to make a connection? Uh, that's really a. Um... Uh, worst case scenario, uh, it obviously looks pretty crowded here within the roadway. Yep. If they can fit in the yep. roadway, that'd be great. Um, if that's completely invisible, then that walk is our last option. Got it. I, I could also look to drop this into the, um, into that, you know, like right up against the curb, if that makes sense, and get it out of the sidewalk there. My guess is, and I, I honestly defer to, to Todd and Avi and Para and Amy on this, but that would likely be preferable rather than running it uh, underneath the sidewalk. But whatever, I defer to the PIC team on that. Okay, let me also I'll look into to, uh, having them do that. Okay. Hey, Todd, uh, have we checked this trajectory sorry. with our, our most recent MAFA main like parking lot maneuvers? Is this in a road in the future? Yeah, I actually looked into that. Um, this, uh, well, first of all, Shelley, what you have uh, noted as Main Street here, um, I actually am pretty sure that's um, Mystic Avenue, not Main Street. So uh, just double check, uh, or have your engineers double check the records there. Um, Amy, I believe this is right at the location where we uh, widened the Mystic Avenue right of way um, a year or so ago, if you remember correctly. Um, so I believe this is all within the right of way currently. If that answers your question. Yeah, no, I know that we moved lines over here. I just didn't, if he's going off where the streets are today, they're not going to be there tomorrow. Yeah, so I believe the widening that we entertained a few years ago was right here, kind of in this, no, I can't see my cursor, but um, right between Moffaway and Main Street, um, as Shelley has it shown. So. I think we're all set. Great. All right. Other questions or comments on this one? Uh, Shelly, we'll see you in four weeks on this one as well. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day and stay safe, everybody. You too. Our final item of new business is New England Avenue at Woodrow Avenue, Norfolk Street, Dorchester, specific repairs, grant of location on a set of petitions by National Grid. Todd, do we know who's presenting for National Grid? Um, I've seen them jumping on and off. Uh, we had Peter Nagel, we had Sam Uefo. Um, Got it. I don't know if Steve Damiano was ever on. Um, I, I see Peter's logged on. Good afternoon, Commissioner. There I'm on, Todd. A little bit of a little bit of a technical glitch on getting off of mute there, but uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for the time. Peter Nagel from National Grid. I'm joined by, Sam, uh, as Todd referenced, Sam Alifo, our engineer. Todd Liming. I excuse me, uh, Steve Damiano, our Siting uh, consultant and Ryan Stolt from our 
real estate division. Um, what you have before you today, I think, is a uh, interesting uh, proposal on our part, and uh, one that um, I think reflects a, uh, a newfound uh, collaboration among the city, Department of Neighborhood Development, and National Grid. Our real estate folks have ID'd uh, working with the DND to um, ID potential sites that could uh, facilitate the city's request to get our uh, replacement infrastructure off of uh, city rights of way. And this is uh, among those coming to you. Um, what we're looking to do is to replace an aged uh, regulator station that serves uh, in excess of 4,000 customers in the area by placing it on a DND parcel uh, across the way out of the, again, out of the right of way, hearing the city's request on that. The, uh, the new pit would be uh, up to safety standards on a, it's a two chamber pit that would be less susceptible to breakdown. It would be easier to maintain and um, just a, a, a overall better uh, application for the 4,100 some odd customers who will be serviced by the pit. Um, above and beyond the replacement of the regular, regulator station, we're looking for the commission's approval to um, create a, a plaza park on the uh, past DND site that would include uh, several American yellow, AKA maple trees, which are uh, frequent in the area, as well as some pear berry in a raised planter. Uh, we've reached out to the applicable uh, agencies for comment and have received some of those working with those folks. Um, National Grid envisioned probably a 12-week construction time frame with uh, both replacement of the existing vault with uh, removing any uh, critical infrastructure um, and the placement and construction of the new vault pending the commission's approval. Uh, in addition to that 12 weeks, we'd look at a couple of other weeks to do a uh, the plaza park, again, with the, the decorative planter, uh, trees and uh, shrubbery, uh, a pear berry shrub, as well as landscape on that. The, the pit would be cited, um, looking at the documents, the, the pit would be cited along the uh, existing fence line running parallel with New England Avenue at the back side of the existing of the uh, proposed parcel. The planter would be in front of that and then the requisite sidewalk and curbing out to New England Avenue. The inlet piping would come off of uh, Woodrow while the outlet piping would go across to our exist near our existing station on the far side of Norfolk, the inbound side toward Codman Square, if you will, on that side of uh, Norfolk. Be happy to answer any uh, questions, and I hope that uh, paints somewhat of a picture on what we're looking to do. That was very, that was very helpful. Thank you, thank you so much for uh, uh, for that overview. I, I guess a quick question, in, in part, Hara, this might be one that that you or a member of your team can better answer, but. Uh, this program on this connects into sort of some of the future things we'd want to do on New England Ave, is that correct? This was coordinated with Zach. Perfect. That's Amy, thank you. That was Peter, Peter, can you hear me? This is PJ. Yes, Power, I can hear you. A uh, couple of things, just for the record, Peter, uh, we've known each other too long, uh, at least 10, 15 years, and we have a uh, 
when I say we, public works and the gas company, we are always trying to do the right thing. That has been the hallmark of our relationships. I appreciate you uh, being part of the equation. I don't think I know your engineer as well as I do, but then that would mean me knowing that person for 15 years or plus or minus. So uh, I'm just hearing little tidbits of information about where things are, what was promised, what needs to be done. And I am not going to profess that I know all the details. But the assurances I have in this conversation is knowing that you are in the conversation, Peter. You have stock value credibility. So a uh, couple of questions that regular regulator hit, OK? Uh, that is against the fence line. Do you have a? Uh, Regular, do you have a legal obligation to notify the house that is next to it? Can you help me to understand that part? Because there's a private abutter that is going to abut that regulator pit, even though the regulator pit is on city controlled property. What are your notification standards? Do you have to notify that homeowner, the nice brick building that shows in your picture? Sure. What, Paro, whether that's a legal obligation or not, I wanted to start these proceedings first, and I will be notifying the uh, the landowner and or residents of that property. Yes, that is okay. my plan to do that. Got it. Okay, because uh, it, it, it's, it's, it is good civic duty, whether it is legally obligated or not, to let that individual know that the immediate property adjacent to it is going to have... Uh, this. The second part is, uh, from what I understand, uh, you will be building it and okay, you are the uh, national grid is going to construct this and there were some questions as to who is going to maintain but I think that responsibility may be falling on my shoulders and I'm okay with it. I have a slightly hunched shoulders but I think I can still hang in there. Uh, the third thing is there and uh, Todd Lining, if you could jump in. There was a lighting issue. Uh, can, can someone fill in the details? Todd? Yep, so that, that one single light that you see uh, more or less in the middle of the plaza here, uh, that has been proposed by National Grid. Um, they've reached out to the Public Works Street Lighting Division um, to determine whether or not that is appropriate. Uh, that coordination still needs to get finalized. I think there was a little bit of confusion as to whether or not this was uh, this light would be in the roadway, not in the roadway, um, privately maintained, publicly maintained. Um, just to clarify something that was said a bit earlier, um, this entire um, area where these improvements are being proposed is within the public right of way. Um, this was formerly a DND parcel that was turned over to Public Works and then uh, subsequently uh, absorbed into the New England Ave right of way so all of this is public right of way these are public sidewalks um, so it is uh, it is this commission's uh, within this commission's authority to grant um, the approvals to do all of this work to national grid there's your answer peter the light needs to go in we can't be creating one full space just like this and have it in a questionable situation when the lights go down when the sun goes down. Okay, so the light will be properly positioned. Uh, you will power it, uh, juice it up, uh, install it, and then if it gets knocked down, I will replace it. Yes, Todd, is that the game plan? That does seem like that's the way this is going, uh, but we do need National Grid to get explicit uh, confirmation from the street lighting division that that is acceptable and that this uh, light fixture is the most appropriate fixture for this location. I am I'm confident that the consultants Peter has brought to the equation uh, will manage to do that thing. If not, uh, no, there's no if not. They will do it. it. It has to be done. Yes, right, Peter? You got good people, right? The plan is to get the feedback from uh, the uh, Commissioner Donaghy and go from there, Para. That is the plan, yes. Awesome. You see how nice things are when you are playing in the equation? Very nice. Wait, other questions or comments on this? Todd or Robbie? Uh, 
Uh, there are a few other minor tweaks that need to happen to these plans um, that the project, I believe, is aware of uh, based on comments that they've received. We will need updated plans before their public hearing, uh, but we'll work with the project team to get that done. Perfect. Thank you, Todd. Any members of the public? I see none. All right. Uh, if it works for National Grid, we will uh, see you back on the agenda in four weeks on May 21st. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sounds good. Thank you very much for your time this yeah. afternoon. Our, uh, our pleasure. Thanks for your patience. And uh, to the city team on this call, thank you for your, your patience, your flexibility, and uh, your work throughout this early has been a, a, a different approach uh, and, and went uh, very smoothly. So thank you for everybody's hard work on that. Uh, and with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, Thank you so much. Adjourned. Thank you so much, all. <laughs>